So we've been friends since the sixth grade. Before you kissed at sixth grade. I know, what the fuck? <laughs> I used to be so bad with women. Like, Any publicity is culture. good publicity. Let me just it tell is. you I'm that. Just, thank you, Kanye. Like, <laughs> love you. I actually love Kanye because he's just like bold and himself, yeah. and he'll just just say whatever he wants. So here, I want you to agree with me and just like let me vent. But then I always had boyfriends that would just like give me their like two cents and like play devil's advocate. And I'm like, fuck those fuck boyfriends. <laughs> I'm like, no. So I work for a nonprofit. So I help foster kids find their forever home or like get reunited with That's their family. Cool. So it's like such like a different avenue that I'm going in and right now I'm in the training process and the training is two months like it's fucking nuts because of all the material I need to read but it's like I'm learning like legal stuff so I'm going to feel like a lawyer at this point and so what I do is I write the case files for the kids and I like find like their uh, CASA guardian like um, it's guardian at litem so like if a kid goes into like foster care and stuff like that, they obviously have a court case. And so they need a representative to speak for them and advocate for them. So it's called guardian at litem, we call it gal. And so they, we assign them that and the gal like comes to me and I write the court case for them, get all the information and I send that to the judge and that's the only thing the judge knows about the case. And so it's like super important that I get like all the details, all right? the fucking details so they can be placed in the correct spot. Like, okay, yeah, like, their parents have been going through these resources and, like, fixing their shit and, like, you know, they deserve, like, they're going to be with their parents again or, like, we find them an adoptive home or find them the right, like, guardianship and stuff. So it's really rewarding. It's a lot, but also what's really nice about it is I only have to be in the office one day a week. Wow. But I'm, like, remote. So I can be, like, if I'm, like, hungover, I can just be in bed just, does, like, doing all that. Does the, does gal have a gala? No. They should because that's a really good name. For I know, and it's exactly <laughs> a fundraiser. The gal gala, the gala, like no, what? literally, that's so smart because like we're a nonprofit, so like yeah, we only get most... we get paid by like the grants and like by state, but it's so solid and stuff, and we get so much money from it. Where like they pay for our entire like health benefits, and like I have a good salary now, but like every year you get a three percent raise, and like All my right. friend started a year and a half ago. Now she's like a huge like head supervisor. Now she makes sixty grand. So it's like slowly you make you keep making more and stuff like that. But like I'm not even in it for the money or anything. It's just like rewarding and like helping those that like can't help themselves. Yeah, you know, is important. it's like, I think it's so important and it's like so cool. And I the fact that I like can be remote and just like be on my computer and they give you a computer. I have my own office like it's it's so cool. It's definitely different. <laughs> also with sorry. No, go ahead. Go for it. Uh, also, <laughs> with charities or with nonprofits, like you want to say you're like you're, you're not in for the money, but I still have to pay my bills, right? Like, right. So you, you have to. So it is it is a beautiful thing when you pay somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing in right. charity. Like you have to pay somebody. You to you do, have to like, not, exactly. What's so crazy though is like the gal people. They're all volunteers. So these mm. are people that are either retired or like just want to give back to the community, but like they put in like 40 to 50 hours a week. Jesus. Like they like work hard, like they have to go check in on the child, they have to see them once a month by law, they have to see them, see them physically, talk to their foster parents, talk to the um, like actual parents and everything like they, and they have access, what's so crazy, cause like there's HIPAA and stuff like that, because they're a gal and like they are connected to the child and on a case, they can go to like the parents like mental institute. They can go to like the parents doctors and get all of their medical records. Oh, shit. They can get everything. They can get their criminal records. They have that right. And they can do the same with the kid to get as much information they want to build that case. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you need a clear picture if they're gonna Right. And so like if you go to them, like obviously, like if you go to a hospital and you're like, I need the medical records of this child, they'll like fuck off. Like yeah. HIPAA, you know? All you have to do is call a lawyer, hey. I need you to go yell at these people. Lawyer will come right down and be like, it's by law, you have to give us this, like, and they'll give it to him. Damn. No, it's like, it's crazy. There's so much about it and I'm like still learning and I'm like, there's so much I have to read and I'm like such a note taker. I'm like a paper person. I like, I can't just read it cause I'll forget it. So I'm over here like writing all this stuff down. My hand is cramping and I'm like, oh my God, there's so much to learn. <laughs> <laughs> so much to learn, but it's so rewarding. It's so great. Wait, like, do I you still it. write? Uh, do you write like this? Yeah. I have, I don't write. 
I, I like I realize all I do is type on my phone or I type on my computer. So if I'm and lazy, I'll, ty- write, I'll type. But when I write, it's so bad. And my it's handwriting is perfect. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like my handwriting, that's the one thing I do get compliments on. Everyone's like, your handwriting's so. It's pretty. the one thing. You've never been complimented on anything else in your life. Okay. Just your handwriting. Ah, uh, you're get right. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, I get complimented <laughs> by like men that want to get in my pants, and I'm like. Yeah, but have you ever been? Have you ever been <laughs> complimented? Like, exactly. <laughs> have right. you ever been complimented on your bartending skills? I have. People See? actually will come up to me and be like, "I don't even want to order a drink. I just want to watch you because like the way you do it is so fun to watch." Dude, you're fast as fuck. I'm fast as fuck, but I like to be flair. So like, I'll do like four bottles at one time or like pour it and go like this and like just be dramatic yes. with it. But at the same time, I'm having a good time because as a bartender, you're not just selling drinks, you're selling the experience, mm-hmm. right? So I'm over here like dancing along, selling the experience, like, hey, how are you? How's it going? And they just like eat it up. And what I've noticed too, and it's so sad, after I like left, like I'll recognize people downtown and stuff and people will be like, oh my God, I'm so sad you don't work at Roddy's anymore. You're my favorite bartender. You're the only one that I would go to because you were so nice. You asked how my night was. You were, even if you're in the shittiest mood and we knew it, you were so kind to us and you got our drinks in like two seconds. And I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's a hard thing because. Uh, it's fun though. You meet so many I people. S- I quit uh, the bar in December mm-hmm. and then I like wanted to do full-time photo video and all this stuff. Good for you though, pursue your dreams. It's, it was so, there's all these learning lessons, but one thing I learned is I can't just sit at home alone. Like it, it, like I go nuts. No, I can't be alone either. I can't can't, can't be alone. I I used to be able to. I live alone and I'm like texting all my friends. I'm bored, I need to stay the night. Like I stayed the Uh, night at my guy best friend's house last night and like it's strictly just friends, strictly friends. Yeah. And I'm like, I just want to be cuddled. Like I just, and he's like, okay, fine, I'll cuddle you. I'm like, okay. Do you have a, <laughs> I can't be alone. Do you have this, uh, speaking of cuddling, I have some friends that I've cuddled and some friends that I've never cuddled. Like that we, we I've like never Like just strictly them. friends, just so, strictly friends. Uh, I, won't, I won't name anyone. I try my best not to name yeah, people. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, I get in trouble for this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> As he should. <laughs> but I have like a, a, a couple, a, I have three or four really solid girlfriends that I've never had sex with. Yeah. And one or two of them, we we do not cuddle. That is not our vibe. That's not your and vibe. And one or two of them I have. And I'm like, yeah. what is that? I don't, it's I like don't, a comfort thing. For me, but I'm like, why do I not want to cuddle that friend? And I do want to cuddle that friend. Right. I'm like, I'm unsure of like, why am I comfortable I feel here? like for me, like the, the friend that I called to like go cuddle and everything, like we've been friends. He was actually, fun fact, my first kiss in the sixth grade. Aww. Um, so we've been friends <gasps> since the sixth you grade. You whore, you kissed at sixth grade. I know, what the fuck, he was, <laughs> he was a whore. I remember, I remember, He. we planned it out. Like I remember this like day, so fucking solid. We planned it out the night before and we we're texting and he and I'm like, okay, we have PE together at seventh period. And I was like, when we go change, you know, like, get dressed and go back to the buses and stuff. Um, I was like, the, there's the um, doors that can lead out to like the yard and like the doors are right next to each other. I was like, just walk outside and we can like make out right there real quick and then go back inside. I remember I walked out, I'm shaking. I'm like this. And he's all like nice and calm and like sticking his tongue down my throat. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and it, that was my first kiss ever. And I'm like glad I'm still besties with him. What? And it's so crazy because he's neighbors with my aunt and uncle. And my aunt and uncle are best friends with his parents. Oh. And then his parents are friends with my dad because they're in like the Chevron business and they have their own um, like oil changing company on Garrity Boulevard in Nampa. And my dad and uncle and my dad's best friend all owned um, like car salesmen, like their own shops on that same road. So they were for everybody to him. So we're all connected family wise. Yeah. And so it's like kind of cool. Do they secretly rude that you guys are gonna get together? They do, they do. <laughs> so like I, we, and we're like him and I are both are like, we're pretty well off. And um, we're very close with our parents and stuff like that. So like he tells his parents like everything about me. I tell my parents everything about him. Like he FaceTimed me the other day. I'm like, dad, say hi to Austin. Like, you know, whatever. And like, we go to dinner with his parents. They always invite me over. Sure. Like we went to the rodeo. It's so funny. So I hadn't seen his mom since like sixth grade, right? And his mom is very quiet, doesn't talk to anyone. And I got her out of her shell. She's laughing left and right. I'm like, 
let's go, yeah. you know? Yeah. And That's then so like feeling. we go to like the little like boutiques that they have set up at the rodeo. And she's like, oh my God, this hat is so cute. Oh my God, this shirt's so cute. She looks at Austin and goes, Austin, buy this for her right now. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, buy it for me. <laughs> and we like took a pig and it looked like a couple pick and he's like, oh my God. But what's so great because we're best friends and like just strictly friends and like nobody believes us. But I'm like, dude, I turn him down all the time. I know he wants to fuck me low key. But I won't do it. I, I, I just, I want to be friends. I just want buds. I don't want to ruin that friendship. It's not low key anymore. You just named him. Yeah. Sorry, Austin. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Austin. Love you. Love you. Um, no, yeah, of course he does. Yeah. No, he's great. He's great. We love each other. Definitely. But I don't think I could ever date him or like be with him. But he's just like my best friend. But yeah, no, we're like wingman for one another. So when we yeah. go downtown, so I got myself into some shit because um, we tell everyone that we're siblings. Because we kind of look alike. Sure. And um, I'm like, yeah, he's 14 months older than me. Like, our parents got busy, you know. And, like, so we were in the same grade. And, like, everyone believes it. Everyone downtown thinks we're siblings. It's so funny. <laughs> but it's like, we can't just say we're best friends. Because when he's hitting on a girl, and then a girl will see me, she's going to get jealous. Yeah. She, I, I hate to say it, but it's, it's true. And vice versa. And... Um, I always have to say, like, I'm his sister, so it helps out. That would help. It helps. But, but then now I'm, like, texting this guy, like, not, I don't want to date him, like, interested, just for fun, whatever. He straight up hung out with him today before I came here. He thinks we're siblings, and I had to play his fucking lie. I'm like, if this ever oh, no. escalated with us, you're going to find out that he's then, not, yeah. he's just my best friend. And then he's going to be pissed. He's like, you're and hiding it, something. <laughs> right, and it's so hard because it's like, Ooh. we're best friends, but it's like, me as a girlfriend. Aside from like me and Austin, like me as a girlfriend, if my boyfriend has a girl best friend, bye. <laughs> You're not fucking texting her. You're not hanging out with her. I don't care best friends or not. Like nobody's friends with friends. And I'm so hypocritical about that. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't be that way, but I'm like legit with Austin, it's just buds. Like, dude, it it's is so a, hard. It is a tricky bitch. Cause like, it's uh, so tricky. my, my buddy uh, was dating this, uh, he, he had sex with this girl once. Only once, and then they became like really close friends. Right. But every single girl he dates after her is so uncomfortable with her. And they are so platonic now. Yeah. But it like, but that was like the, the thing. So I get it. I get both sides. Mm -hmm. And it's like so hard because if you're not in that like friendship relationship, you don't get it and you yeah. won't get it. Right? Like, uh huh. Well, it, my sister, so okay, rough. so my sister is best friends uh, or like really close friends with this guy. They live together. Um, that He's dope. Uh, he's been on the podcast with Paul. He won't, they won't care if I name this. I always do this. <laughs> but uh, he uh, he definitely wants to have sex with Lindsay. And they right. made it a bit. Like, oh. they do it like, and he's just like, you want to see my penis? She's like, no. no. You know, like, and you, so you it's can become be playful and fun. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, like, you know that he's still, like, deep down, I'm like, he, like yeah, for sure I want to be with if you. If she was like, like, let's fuck right now, he'd be like, yeah. let's go, baby. No. But, so, <laughs> Sit on me. so one of the things <laughs> I think about is, like, okay, so when Lindsay would date somebody else, I don't actually think it matters if she had had sex with him or not. A guy's still going to be jealous of that friendship. Yeah, no, it, it really is. Because you're close with this, like, somebody that's the opposite gender mm -hmm. of you. And it's like, I wish I had their relationship. Because no. it's like, Austin and I finish, finish one another's sentences. Like, we get each other. Like, he'll say some stupid shit. Nobody thinks it's funny. I'm over here dying. Yeah. And he, we eat it up because he's like, thank you for thinking I'm funny. No. I'm like, you think I'm funny. So it's like, and we can be weird with one another. And it's like people that are dating him are gonna be jealous of that. Like every mm -hmm. single one of his ex-girlfriends and every single one of my ex-boyfriends, super jealous. But what I do love about us is like we understand that. And so it's like if I'm dating somebody and like I can't hang out with them all the time or I, he knows like I can't text them, he like respects it. But then when he knows we're gonna end up breaking up. And he's like, and then I hit him up. Rude. Hey. He's like, I'm like, I text him like, oh, hey, what are you doing? He goes, oh, you're single? And I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, you're single again? And he's like, love it. Like, I'm so glad we can be besties again. So right now we're, oh, man. yeah. Right now we're in this like single era. Cause I'm like, I don't want to be. Hashtag salute summer. By the way, no, we started. Literally, I, though. I didn't tell you this, but we have started. 
Oh, yes. so I'm eating this up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always try to get everything ready. And right. then I like, cause it's, it's, it's easier than just being like, click it on. And right, blah, yeah. Blah, blah. So it's, well, hi yeah. Austin, sorry I'm telling you all the tea. <laughs> Mariah, <laughs> <laughs> just letting me go all the secrets. I know, I'm no. telling you guys secrets, it's so fun. No, like I told you, you can listen to the audio. Yeah, I know, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> If I was dating somebody and they are, or when I date somebody, they have strong females that I know they respect and they have like a good like back and forth in this relationship, then I'm like, all right, so you do care about women and see them as people and right. not as like objects. And so it's a little comforting for me. It is uncomfortable sometimes when you're like, okay, are you, you know. But it's like, I feel like if, or whatever, yeah. Like, are you getting, yeah. Exactly. It depends on the girl too. Cause it's like, mm -hmm. I feel like the girl, like, so if, Austin brings a girlfriend around, which she's never have before. But I'm the type of, like, I'm going to make her feel comfortable yeah. and, like, be her friend, too. Like, I want to get to know you. Like, obviously, my best friend loves you. Like, why does he love you? I want to yeah. figure it out, too, because I can love you, too. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we can be friends. Like, we can be homies. Right. But it's, like, I've never been given that opportunity, which sucks. That does and it's, suck. like, and I try to give that opportunity to, like, my boyfriends that I have. And it's just, like, never happens. And I'm it just, like, tough. it's so unfortunate. And it's just like, you just got to respect it, but we still love each other through it. And like, yeah, Dude, it's, yeah. I, uh, so one of my best friends, her name is Ivy. I'm going to shout them out because they're dope. So love Ivy. Ivy. Ivy, we love you. Ivy and I have been such homies. Right. They're like she used to bartend with me and she's just like, when she would tell other people about me, she's like, I don't get why girls are into Josh. Like, I do not find it attractive Because you just feel like, platonic, And right? I'm like, I don't really get why you guys are in the... I, I get it, but I've never... Like, we've you never been e even remotely sexual. Like, that sexual we've tension's we've not there. We've never kissed. We've never done right. anything. She's cute. I'm cute. Nothing's happened. But so many people... <laughs> just, I have a hole in my mouth. I just... <laughs> Oh, I thought you were just laughing at the fact I was cute. I was like, oh. I'm cute. Oh, no. <laughs> like, I'm like, I just, I spilled myself. I was like, all like, focus on that. So, so um, funny. But what's crazy is so like, we have all our regulars like, dude, you guys definitely have fucked. And we're like, no, we haven't. No, we're and, nice. um, But what I love about Ivy and her boyfriend, Kevin, like Kevin, it, there's zero jealousy. He's like, as soon as I, I, I hang out that, and he's just like, he's, he's like, yeah, of course he doesn't fuck. Like, he's no threat. So right. when I see Kevin, He's dope. We laugh. I'm like, I don't think he views me as a threat because as he, he realizes though. I'm not like, and he is able to read that room. You know? Exactly. So and I think like... they do it really well because Ivy has a ton of dude friends. Like, right. And, and they're able to like figure that out. And he's just like, dude, I don't feel threatened. Like I know that I'm exactly. And so it, it takes a bit of trust. It takes does. a bit of like reading like energies like, Ooh, that could, that could, that guy's safe, this guy's not, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. You know, so. I feel like it's so hard too, because it's like, for me personally, like I do have like my solid like five or six girlfriends that I'm like, yeah. super close with. We get together at least like once a week, hang out, do whatever. But it's like, I do have like solid guy friends that are strictly friends. And it's so hard because it's like, when you get in a relationship, you can't talk to them anymore because yeah. every person that I date, and my pickers off. I'll, I'll admit that. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, I Dude, have, I, I've had some great people. But I gotta like, introduce you to my sister. Her picker is terrible. <laughs> my picker's off sometimes. <laughs> like, some people I question, I'm like, why was I even into you? <laughs> but like, I don't know, like, and then they get super jealous. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, no, like, these are just my buds. And, like, I'm such like a guy's girl because like, I have two older brothers, mm, two, three older brothers. I don't know. We what does that mean? Two or three? Okay, so. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we can well, kind of like four, want. I guess. Okay, so there's like, so I have like two biological brothers, okay. but then there's my cousin, who's my dad's nephew, and they lived with us like our whole life. So I view, and he's an only child. Yeah. So he views all of us kids like as his sibling. So I view him as my brother, but then also like my family is the type to like take people in and like help like our like friends that mm -hmm. need help. So like growing up, we had um, my brother's best friend that lived with us basically our entire life. And he views me as a sister, I view him as a sister. And so it's like, I count these people as brothers because I know at the end of the day, like if I'm in shit, I need help, you know, anything, like I can call these people even though they're not blood, you yeah, know? Yeah, so okay. it's like, it's different because like I grew up with them since I was a fucking toddler. So, so it's, it's like more hard. like a Fast and the Furious situation where yeah. like they're family. Yeah, they're, we're family. family. Wait, have you yeah. watched, have you yeah. watched I, I view all my friends as family, though. That's the thing. Like, I treat them as sense. my own. Shout out to Paul Walker. Um, <laughs> what you're doing is that, um, I, 
gal, what is it called, guardian? And guardian mat litem. Yeah, given like your description of your family. Yeah. Netflix, like, yeah. That it's such like a family thing, yeah. I'm like all about that. Can uh, wait, pee break, I have to pee. Jenny. Pee break. We're back, bitches. We're um, back. I, uh, yeah, normally I'm just like, I just always have pee breaks because I pee a lot. Um, I actually do too. Well, because I mean, we're drinking as well. So yeah. it's like. Um, so there's like a few things that I've learned with podcasting, but what was the thing I wanted to tell you about? Oh, so if you utilize, um, let's spitball this because you had a okay. good setup. Um, I have such a great setup. That's my. You have a really thing. good setup. Okay, so if you, if I were to redo my start, I wish I would have started when I had the idea, right? Which was like three years ago. I've been thinking about mine for like we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Like I thought about mine for so long, didn't know where to start, didn't know like the technology side of it. Like I'm, yeah. like, I know how to talk about stuff and like you know create that, sure. but it's like editing the technology of it, like how to actually record it, yep. like the video, you know, like what system to use. But the thing is, when you see the podcasts that you follow, they're all professional. So you they feel, are, so, it's hard. so you feel, oh, when I start, I have to be professional. And I'm a but perfectionist. But they didn't, they didn't start that way. They right. started in these really shit, like uh, Joe Rogan the other day just posted a clip of him because he hit 2000 episodes of his first podcast and it's dog shit like it's so like blurry Shitty. and like because and he's one of like the ogs but right. like he's like yeah i do we just turn up he turned on a webcam like uh screen good for him and they just sat in front of the computer and well, just it's shot like, the shit right? it's just like call her daddy like the two girls mm -hmm. so originally they started they met each other off craigslist and became roommates and they just like started a podcast and then barstool found them that's why and I didn't so even it's know like about they the didn't, thing. and they That's just fun. like exactly, and they were just like living in this rinky-dink small little freaking New York apartment, mm -hmm. and then they just started the podcast, and it's like. But when did Barstool pick pick them up from? Uh, like, like in, honestly, like it, I think they popped off within like two to three months. Okay. Because the shit that they're saying though is unnormal. raunchy. Right. Like they were talking raunchy and didn't give a fuck sure. what they posted, which so that is love the key. Like that is like you, that is one of the things you, you have to try to learn to not care, and that's tough. Which we it's talked really about. Tough. Because like caring. I see, here's the thing, it's like part of me is like, yeah, I don't care what anybody thinks about me and stuff like that. But and then it's like, there's that whole cancel culture and mm -hmm. then you get in your head and you mm -hmm. overthink and then like insecurities comes apart mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my God, I should not have said that. I'm like, oh, I could have said this better. Like, I'm gonna get, oh, uh, people are gonna hate me for it. But at the end of the day, I think everyone's gonna hate you for whatever you yeah. do. Well, and so here's the other thing that will happen is like, if you want a podcast, that means you wanna be public. And if you wanna be public, the more you grow, the more you're going to have to deal with that. So it's all, you're going to have to learn it either way. Right. right. So you might as well just learn it sooner than later. That's right. what, like, at least for me, that's my philosophy right now. Exactly. Is like, fuck it. And like my, I have a ton of insecurities. Yeah. And Who doesn't though? Yeah, Who doesn't? Like one of them is my voice. And every oh, time, too. so every time I've listened to it, I'm like, oof. I, I can't believe I you sound like that. Yeah, I cringe when I hear my voice. It's like, so bad. And then so I'm like, dude, how am I ever going to get a girl ever yeah. posting this clip? I sound so bad. Or people think like I'm some like valley, like stuck up girl. Yeah. And like the way I talk. But I'm just like, oh, it's just listen to the words though. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm actually smart bitches. Yeah. <laughs> but I like, so there's all, there's all these hang ups. But, and there's um, like, for me, I actually think I'm going to get, I'm going to pop off on being canceled. I'm gonna say something too offensive and it's gonna get, it's gonna get uh, like some sort of- like, Any cause, publicity cause is culture. good publicity. Let me just tell you I that. Mean, thank you, Kanye. Like <laughs> Love you. I actually love Kanye cause he's just like bold and himself yeah. and he'll just, just say whatever he wants. Yeah. And you're like, you know you don't fucking care. Like, yeah, exactly. Kind of love that though. Like, mm -hmm. you it's, know, it's I love people that true. are like authentically them even if you know like majority of population does yeah. like agree. But I think, so I think that doing podcasts teaches you to not care about what people think quicker than the average person. Like, I know. So I think that like by doing this, I'm going, it's going to speed up my uh, ability to not care about right. people. 
uh, or not about people, but, but about like, what people think. view me as. Do you think that's because podcasting, you're really doing, like you're representing yourself so well? Because that's what I, when I'm like, oh shit, I care what people think because I don't think that I was representing myself. Right. Like, because it's your forum, do you feel like it gives a better platform to be? Uh, I'm not sure actually, because I do think that, um, I was telling you this earlier, I was like, you have to, you don't have to be your authentic self right away in a podcast. Right. But you're eventually going to get out there, you're right? You're going to get there, yeah. And it, so either you're going to stop doing it because of my authentic self has shown it. Like, like if you're a racist, you're eventually going to come out, right? <laughs> you're going to come right? out. You're gonna if you're homophobic, yeah. it's going to come out at some point. Yeah, and exactly. then if you censor yourself, then people are going to notice, you know, so then you're like, ah, fuck. There's so many, like, avenues to that. And so then, like, you're able to be, like, so you if you can continue being yourself, then you're just nervous about, like, do people like me or not? And that's like, look, as a people pleaser and someone who's right. still insecure, I'm just like, God damn it, some people are gonna think I look stupid. I think blah, with blah, me blah. too, it's like, I'm so personable and it's like, I'm so willing just to say stuff about myself because I have like nothing to hide and I'm just like who I am, unapologetically me, you know? And it's like, but then I get in my head and I'm like, okay, well I'm putting this in the public. So when mm -hmm. you put that out there, it's like people feel obligated to say their own opinion. Dude, I the other thing that we talked about earlier is podcasting is so collaborative. Like, I need all the help I can get. Like, everybody needs help, help me out. It's like, like connections. Who you know? It's just like I'm like I would have ever thought about putting a paper towel there. That Cinda's like, what about if we do this? I'm like, yes, yeah. please. That's yeah. why I like about having podcast days because like the more energy there is and like so yeah. when Cam comes here and like they're talking and they're like, dude, what about this? So you we, just feed into each other. Mm -hmm. You just have conversation. People. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's so fun to connect on like different levels and like get to know people on like their own things mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Um, so back to back to what uh, if I were to give you any recommendations um, about like what I'm learning, mm -hmm. and so I I should be. Uh, this is either nineteen or twenty uh, for me, like the nineteen or twenty episodes, and so if I could learn one thing, I was like, dude, I should have started way sooner. Right. I should not care right. so much about the quality and just like learn these things. And but I think your problem is you're a perfectionist, just like yes. I am. So I'm like, but I want. So good is shit. every podcaster. Right. You really, like they are all creators too. So they went through that same thing. Yeah. And some of them have talked about it. Some haven't. But like, uh, when you think about like they were perfectionists, they were worried about what people thought too. And then eventually it was like, fuck it, I'm just going. And so then you like, just go, go, go. I completely agree because I saw this video because I'm on TikTok a lot. Hell yeah. So I'm like, look me up on TikTok, guys. I just know, post random shit. Shout out to uh, Mariah's talk. Oh, yeah, whatever my, I don't even know. <laughs> it's like, I changed my name so like <laughs> nobody can know who I am, but somehow everybody found it. So I'm like, ugh. Uh, hell yeah. I almost have 6,000 followers and my aim is God for 10,000. Yeah. So I can get like paid for the content mm -hmm. I make. But have right now. Have you yet? Yeah, I got threads and I'm just like, so I had Twitter for a long time, deleted it back in like 2018. And I used to get into many Twitter fights because I, like, <laughs> I say what I want to say. And if like you look back, I'm like, it's deleted now. So nobody can find it. Thank God. No, but, I screenshot like, them all. Yeah, okay. Well, if you knew me in 2018, <laughs> sure. But like I would like in high school, I would just say some like outlandish stuff. And I'm like, I would be canceled in today's day and age for saying this thing. And I'm like, oh, it's embarrassing. But so like threads, I don't, I mean, I have, but I just sure. deleted the app. And I'm well, just like, not Well, what about TikTok? So you said, uh, oh, yeah. so what do you do on TikTok? Do so you... TikTok, I just, I literally post whatever the hell I want. So like right now I do like, not vlogs, but like whenever I get in a mood, I'm like, I just want to talk to somebody, but I like no. to hear my own voice because I'm conceited. <laughs> Talking things out loud is like a lot It's easier. so nice. You know? It's literally Dude. so nice. So I'll like set up my camera and it's like right in front of my like kitchen sink because it's the best freaking lighting. And my kitchen's pretty. Wait, so it's, like, your uh, iPhone camera or do you yeah, have Yeah, my iPhone camera. camera. I literally okay. just put it right there and I just like plus press play on TikTok, like the whole thing. And I just go, so this is what I'm gonna talk about today. And then I just like, I show my personality and everything like that. Some people love it, some people don't. Like I get like, average about like 40 to 300 likes like it yeah. just depends okay but, let like, me let me shoot something by you why don't why don't you do your podcast from your camera in the lighting by your kitchen sink and talk about what you want and you can even script it if you would like but you're like hey this is actually what i want to talk about on this episode 
Why don't you do that to start? Or when you have a friend over, you could just have something more casual style, like to start right. and be like, you know. So my issue is, is like having people over and like doing that. A lot of my friends are very camera shy, or they're like, sure. I don't want this post on yeah. social media. Like they all get in their head. That is don't blame them. Yeah. I don't blame mm-hmm. them. But it's like right now, I want people to just like get to know who I am and like just hear my like own thoughts and like I tell people in the camera, I'm like. I'm just talking for myself. Like, I'm going to rewatch this and, like, it's for me. Like, right. this, you guys are just listening in no. on my own personal thoughts and what I talk to about myself, like, sure. to myself. So, like, and people eat it up, though, because, like, I'll just, like, talk about random people shit. People find out that, like, you were saying, people find authenticity of, like, the best quality of people. Mm-hmm. Like, you guys feel very brave for just, like, putting yourselves out there. And right. Like, oh, I know. I'm also... So, I think that, like, that's like, the most interesting yeah. thing is, like, being authentically yeah. you and, like, Just not caring. Yeah. You know what no, I mean? So, not Karen. Yeah, Karen. 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 Yeah, <laughs> no, okay, so wow. if you were to, uh, uh, this is, all, like, uh, I'm spitballing ideas at this point to help you, in a, like, to restart your, your right, podcast. Right. But, like, if you do, because your computer died, you don't have the studio anymore. Yeah, so, I'm over like, here. Resources use, gone. Bye, like, bitch. Use, the, use a phone. Get it tripod maybe get a ring light or not like Have whatever one. and then just if obviously you're just starting by you were only talking solo anyway on yeah. your, like old ones so like talk solo do a little, you know, have a script or something, you know, yeah. what I mean? like something you were like, I want to hit this point. I want to hit this point. So here's this, here's this, but you could just do that from an iPhone and then you can still, then you have the video so you can clip it. So then you That's can nice put your too. favorite clips onto TikTok like you're already doing. Yeah, I can right? like edit that. And, and then, then segues for the podcast. Yeah. Right. That's what like, I'm saying. Yeah. And like, if you want, I will like I you can borrow my shit or you can whatever. Yeah. But I'm like my only thing, it's like, yeah, I'd love to borrow your stuff, but like how do I edit it when I have nothing to edit with? You, so you I would do saying? um it's actually I, we will talk uh, the more technicalities off this because it's a really yeah, boring conversation. It's, it's <laughs> but Sorry, guys. it's actually easier than you like think really? if you run it from like a phone. Um, oh, really? So yeah, like I'm one of my hangups, my perfectionism hangup is because I'm a videographer and a photographer. I have like I have to make it the you best. You know of the all best. that stuff. I'm like I don't know this shit. But it also gets in my head because I'm like, dude, I'm promoting being good at this. And then I can't put out content that's not good at it's this. It's like imposter syndrome. Have you ever heard of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I have. And I think a lot of content creators have, but it's just like you have to work past that. Because mm-hmm. I made a podcast about that, by the way. Yeah. It's called Crafted. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you, but you have to get past that. So these are these to. hurdles that yeah. like other podcasters have already like like done, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to get past it as well. Like, yeah, and no, I'm it's getting a, past it. And, and so, it makes me feel good because it's like, I'm not the only one that feels this way, Mm -hmm. you know, because on social media, it's like such a facade where it's like all these girls have like filters. Oh my God, she's so perfect. Her skin's perfect. She's so pretty. Her outfits are awesome. But it's like, she took like 15 takes of this. Yeah. Or it's just like anybody that posts anything, they edit it for hours on end, Mm -hmm. you know? I'm the type of person, I'll edit it for like mm, two seconds. This is what I like about, (laughs) this is what's nice about podcasting though, because you can't filter the fuck out of everything. I can't filter everything. Right? Like so and that's mouth, what's I'm like <laughs> Yeah, so what what's nice is like the uh like the it it's more <laughs> lackadaisical, but you get good at like not filtering yourself. Like not doing a like a oh, I only posted it in the best lighting. Like I have right. a, I have a clip of me when I was so drunk that I fell over right here and I like I got too I got super wasted i forgot to turn the camera off so i caught it all i love that and i was more. making <laughs> stupid noises like, and then me, me. I'm, <laughs> dude i'm watching i'm watching this clip and i was like please don't start jerk, jerking off josh like please like you like, just start cringing at yourself yeah, like, i you was like oh no like, oh, i'm so cringe but i'm like me. this is how i am blackout this is terrible like so i'm, I'm sorry standing, my friends ever saw me i'm standing here and i just standing fall for no reason, just like ugh, fall, Goodbye. and then I like look at I look at like the the area that I fell. I was like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> just like dude, what no. the fuck, dude? And I was like, so I can't funny. put this out. No. And then I was like, 
yes, I should put this it's out. It's kind of funny. You and should. And so then I did. Yeah, it was just as like, you should. Yeah, and so that's that's the attitude that I'm trying to take. Like to go into it's stuff. It's such a work in progress. If comfortable with themselves like mm-hmm. that, and then it's easier to be their friend. It's easier to connect to them on like a social level. It's easier to like mm-hmm. like them because they're like, damn, this shit's real. They're not like. Yeah. No, yeah, like, you want to connect with people that are like being them yeah. and not like putting on this like fake little yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. That's and imagine how many people, people exactly. out there want to hear your stories. But they are not, they're flawed. They are flawed individuals. Right. And that's how actually you resonate with people. You're right. Like, Dude, this is like, oh, I fucked up here. Yeah. I'm just going to show you that I fucked up or I did this or whatever. Yeah. Like, so but that's, nobody's perfect. And I think like nobody really talks about that either. It's like yeah. we all make mistakes. We've all done like some really shitty things in life, but here we are still doing this shit. Like, yeah. People talk it, about it at large, but not about, like, their personal accounts about it. Exactly. Like, and no, they, like, are judging and, like, hating others for other stuff. But it's, like, we can hate you for your things that you've done, too. I'm going to so tell you the like, most fucked up thing I've ever done. Oh, God. I don't think I've ever. I'm, I'm uh, nervous. Uh, yeah. Well, this is my, like, uh, you won't have to worry about it because it's me saying it. Okay. You don't have to do it. I've never actually done this. The most fucked up thing I ever did is I had sex with two of my really good friends, girlfriends at the same time at a party while they were in the same house. And when they see this, they're gonna be pissed and they, they, they <laughs> might not see it, but I did it. I've never put this publicly out there. It was so fucked up. I was like really drunk and I won't name any names, but like they will know. Uh, I, I went, uh, I played a show at this house party in uh, Lincoln Street, which is like a BSU. Yeah, yeah, I know where that I, is. Um, I so we, we pulled out the window, so there's people outside, and we're inside playing, uh, like having fun. We, I used to live in this party house. We would call it the Fifth House, which is Fires in France, which is my old band. And it was like 12 of us living there. And um, I frat boy house, okay. No, but we weren't frat. I know. We were like, yeah. we were like dirty musician house. Grungy, like, like, yeah. great. Um, or, um, uh, our neighbors people. hated us. We partied every night. Um, so I had my bass player lived in the room next door, and then his girlfriend moved in there. Another kid lived upstairs, and then his girlfriend moved in, and so it was those two girls. Uh, they came to the show, and apparently I started making out with the one girl um, in the house, and uh, uh, she, she like left, and she went and told the other girl, she was like, dude, Josh just like made out with me, and she's like, do you want to go with a threesome? And they're like, yeah, so they both came in, drug me upstairs, I barely remember this. But I remember these moments, like these like tiny right, little remember, like, like little parts. And I remember being not hard at all trying to <laughs> put my whiskey dick, dick in. over here. Uh, what's that? Say it again. Whiskey dick. Oh yeah, for sure. Like I was <laughs> so tanked, and I like I remember the <laughs> just like that's the only thing I really remember is like trying to take my flaccid dick and <laughs> put it well, in the white okay, girl. Okay, to be fair, little fucked up because they were your friends, but also fucked up on the girlfriend's yes. part because at the end of the day. They're the ones in the relationship with the commitment and not you. But no, I, I had a, something wrong. But but, I, I don't, but they planned it. You're, you don't have a girlfriend. You're doing it. Listen, listen, no, but I also I had a girlfriend. So it was oh, you had a girlfriend. Up. So you were just she like was double there. whammy shit. Hold yes, <laughs> yes, yes. This is the most fucked up. So I had a girlfriend at the time, and when she hears it, she, it like whenever that's also going to be like whatever. So I'm the she's I'm, fine. Uh, and then the I woke up the next day with her at her place and i was like did i dream that i was like oh no i was like that was a dream that was a dream no, it I, had to be a dream i get that and feeling then though. i went home I need proof to know and i walked in i walked in and i sat down and they were like sitting there and i was just like did that happen and they were like yeah and so like because i like, i was so just like oh no no because i have it was so like, bad. Like even today, like I fell asleep and I had thought somebody walked into the room and like sat down and talked to me, but it was just such a like weird, like lucid dream. Yeah. I thought it was real life. Yeah. Well, they're just like normal. They're yeah, they're so normal. normal. It's like, oh hi, weird. So this is a this is a moment right now where I just let go of one of my dirtiest secrets publicly, and I. Uh, so this is like practice for myself because I'm like, That's dude, if I can't do some of this shit. Like if I can't let yeah. go of my like uh, uh, worries about what that guy thought that time Sorry. or what that girl thought, you know, yeah. uh, then I can't 
then I shouldn't be a podcaster because I have to you, get you it out You have to there. be just like, just spill that shit out there. No. Yeah. I mean, I think about Call Her Daddy all the time and I know like that podcast is like, shifting and like becoming a little sure. bit different and yeah. stuff but i'm just like this stuff that they say on there like i laugh about it and like in the very beginning of the things like when both of them were on there and mm-hmm. i'm just like they're saying stories so i'm like i have stories that can totally relate that are on the same level but i can never absolutely tell anybody this because i'm like that's yeah. so bold of them and not something i've always respected about them mm-hmm. too when you're transparent, you know that you're worthy of being like, okay, so this is my worst person. And then when people still see you, still respect you, still like their opinion of you haven't changed, it like re- like solidifies your worth. You're like, doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. And it's just like people eat that up too. Yeah. It's just like, I'm tired of fake people. It's just like, be fucking real. Like, yeah. just say who you are, your stories. We're all like not perfect anyway. Oh. So, and not everybody, like, I don't think that everyone needs to be public. Like, I know that this is my path. Like, I know that this is you, what I want to do. You have that set, like, you have that feeling, you, yeah. that gut feeling that you can't explain. Sure. That's but, how I like, feel. Like, I don't think that all of my friends should be able to, like, do that. Like, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not for everyone. And it's not. You it's know. really not. But I know that this is my path, and I'm like, and we were talking about canceling. Oh I'm like, I, dude, I, I think I'm going to get, so I'm going to get famous on being canceled. But being canceled actually, it actually doesn't cancel you. We've watched it over it and over. It doesn't cancel you because yeah. people are still so, like doing their thing. Work. They just get, you want to listen more because you want to know the drama. Yeah, you're people like, are nosy why? as hell. Nosy. What is that called? The uh, uh, Streisand effect? Have you ever heard of that? I Have you haven't. Heard of that? No. So there was something that like Barbara Streisand, which is, uh, is she a movie star, pop star? God, I sound so uncultured. Me don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> You're like too young for it. I'm too young. 97, <laughs> baby, over here. How old are you? Um, I'm 26. Oh, yeah, you are too young for Barbara Streisand. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, only young. I'm still born in the 90s, so let's respect that. Yeah, she was probably popular <laughs> in the 80s. I Fuck, I don't. I think Wasn't she's a musician. I, she might be a movie star. The, I'm not sure. The like band that you told me like today when you were like, oh asking, yeah, you're like who? I was like who? I don't know. Not going. Not I showed I somebody like, else. No way. Dude, I showed. <laughs> dude, that's hilarious. So I showed somebody else yellow card, and I showed him the most popular hit. Oh, it was a, a girl at off the clock. I was like, dude, this is their most popular hit, and she was like, mm-hmm. never heard it. And it, this was like a, a like, I think there was 2002 is when they had their most popular hit. That's crazy because so that was 21 what, years ago? Six. No. So yeah, you'd be yeah. six, right? Yep. That's wild. Yeah, so I was just like, yeah. I was in kindergarten when 9-11 happened. Yellow card, <laughs> bitches. And they're like, who? I'm like, what? When I first saw that, like I saw it on your social media and I like first read it as Yellowstone. I'm like, I love that show. <laughs> and I was like, wait, yellow card? I was like, nah, I don't know that. Oh, it's so Couldn't good. Couldn't tell you. So good. Well, the thing is, is punk is coming back. Uh, no, from I've MGK. always loved punk. Well, I'm like the basic punk. I'm like Blink 182. I love it. Aliens exist. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you guys are right. All the way back then. And now the government just came out with aliens. Yeah. We all true. knew. We are all you going to go to uh, uh, When We Were Young um, in Vegas this year? No. So Blink 182 is headlining. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Shut the fuck it's in up. In Vegas. They did it last year. Oh. I went. Me and Vegas, though, is not a good match. Let me just tell you that. I had one experience, never again. Oh. You need to do Reno. No. Oh, I, Reno, I go. Reno's way better. I go all the time to Reno. I like love my, Reno. My family's from there, so oh, it's shit. like, I love it. And like my dad, so have you ever heard of like hot August nights? Mm. I have been in some hot August nights, but it, it's probably not the same thing. <laughs> no, so hot August nights, it's like the nugget, like, um, you know, host it and yeah. stuff. And it's just like a bunch of like old cars and like oh, stuff okay. like that. And like vendors are out there. It's like a carnival almost. And it's so fun. It's like three days straight. Yeah. My dad plays in the No Winers Golf Club. So it's like super oh, sure. extravagant, like exclusive and stuff. So he gets like a private jet to pick him up and like take him there. It's so nice. I'm jealous, oh. jealous. And then my mom and I just drive there like losers. And then my dad gets us a, my dad gets us <laughs> like, like a hotel. losers. Yeah, literally. <laughs> my dad gets us like a hotel and then he's like gambling with all of his buddies. And then like during the day we go to hot August nights and then they like golfing yeah. like certain days. And my mom and I will like play this facade with my dad, like, hey, 
dad, like, we need more money to go gamble. And then my mom and I will put, like, one slot machine, mm. keep all the money, pocket it, and the next day go shopping with that money. Because, nice. so, like, we're not stupid. We're like, we don't want to spend $20 on this. Like, we're going to lose it. We know we will. Yeah. So might as well just keep telling him we're losing the money, and he keeps handing it to us. Dude, I'm such a sucker for gambling. <laughs> I know. I'm like, this is what you do. No, if you're in Vegas, if you're a hot girl, so it not you, sorry. I'm not but a hot girl. You and I, if we go to Vegas, you go to the High Rollers Club, and um, every single like hotel Write casino this down. has like <laughs> High Rollers, right? So girls are allowed to go in. So you go up there, you order one drink, and you sit there. You're in your best outfit, makeup done. You look hot as hell, and you just sit there like, just like the cutest thing ever. Men will come up to you and be like, "Hey, like, will you be my good luck charm?" And you say yes. And you go with them. And then if they went big, so like this one guy like won like 60 grand on something. He'll give you 10 grand just for being his like good luck charm. Oh, and like, no and you're literally in the high rollers club and you're over here like just pocketing money just because you're pretty and you're his like good luck charm. Oh my God. So I'm like, when I went, every time I go to Vegas, I don't pay for a single fucking Well, no, thing. I would assume that. that I know. Sure. You, you just walk around and people will come up to you and you just have to be that yes girl. Like I'm yeah. here for the plot. Like, yeah. I'm just going to say yes and do the thing. I have this, uh, so <laughs> I'm so jealous of hot girls, but I also don't want to no. be one. I love being No, it's not fun. It's not fun. Yes. Well, and so there it's is, not, but like, there is you gotta use it to your advantage. a huge, yeah, of course. And I, like, I used to hate on hot girls that you, like, I'm like, dude, you guys get so much they stuff. Stop doing that. And then I started realizing that the, it comes with a very big negative. It is. So yeah. I'm like, you might as well use the positive as much as you can. Oh, you have to use you that Because you have shit. all the negative. Like, I don't deal with people fucking creeping me out. I don't deal with people no, showing like, up creepers, in my house. You get, like, the but then, like, you get, like, guys that will date you just because of your looks and mm. And it's like they like get to know you and like they don't end up liking you and it's just like there's so much shit sure. to it and it's just like and then they get jealous because you're a pretty girl mm -hmm. but it's like and i hate to say it but it's like don't date a hot bitch unless you can handle one so it's like, yes dude and then you're like it's your fault you <laughs> want like you want to date a pretty person dude i there was this guy one time he came into my bar and he was uh talking about how his hot girlfriend like somebody else was like talking to her and he's like it's i just hate what i hate when they look at her. and uh i'm like dude if, if you don't want guys to hit on your girl don't date a hot girl like what the like you signed up for this? Come on now, like let, let's. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I I completely. Then agree. I found out that he had another family. I was like, oh, dude, oh, you, you scumbag. Whore. Yeah. What the hell? What the hell? Yeah. 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 No. Oh, you're you're, you're you're jealous and you're worried about other guys because you're doing the thing. Like yeah. You're doing the thing. yeah. I've noticed too. Like I mean, I've been through like a lot of relationships, and like many people know, like they probably think like I'm like a serial relationship person. Why are we even need to be? I don't even mean to be because it's just like I get out of a relationship and then there's like another person. I'm like, oh yeah, you're cool. I vibe with you and like, let's go date. Like, and it just happens. Sure, it, it literally <laughs> just happens. And what's I'm just your, like. What's your longest time single? Oh, what do you God, think? Oh God, that's a good fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I probably would say mm, two years. That's way longer than your average person. That's really, really long time. Yes. It was two years, but like you have to think like that was because I went through like my shit that I did and I was like sure. so not mentally there or like even ready or like didn't even know how to approach a new relationship because I was like dealing with like my own trauma and like mm -hmm. figuring it out. So, and then I dated somebody and when I did date him, um, we were together for like kind of not off and on. We broke up like three times, but it, I, it was a solid two years. Yeah. Like, through the off and on. I try to explain to people, that's actually, a, it's a pretty long time, I think. I think For so the too. normal person, most people I know within a, a month are with somebody else. Because people can't be alone. And I don't, yeah. I don't think that it's a bad thing. I just think that you should try to try learn to be to alone. Be alone like, no, and you have things like you need to learn and grow about yeah. yourself as well. And like, I'm in that stage too, or, but, like when I date someone, I'm not j dating them just so I'm not alone. Like I see a future, like right. I, I'm i like end game with them and I give it my all and then it ends up biting me in the ass for some reason. Cause I mean, I'm they not didn't perfect. Bite you in the ass. No. This um, relationship. The relationship did. <laughs> I feel like I'm such like 
I feel like I'm a good girlfriend, but there are like some bad parts of me. You know what I mean? And like right. to everybody, right? And so it's just like they can't handle those bad parts. And then I have to remind myself, I'm like, oh, like you don't really love me for me. You love the idea of me. Mm-hmm. And it's like when you love someone, you love them for all of them. And it's like, I'm just, I'm working on me, but like you got to let me through it. I don't know. I just, I go in those relationships where I'm like, okay, like, I see a future, like, I want to invest in you, like, I'm going to give you my all, and then it just bites me in the ass, and I'm like, ah. Of course, like, it'll be yeah. longer, I'm a little sabbatical. I know, yeah. but I'm, like, such, like, a hopeless romantic, I'm like, oh, you love me? Dude, okay, you love me? <laughs> I'm a hopeless romantic, but in a very opposite way, I'm more like a Don Juan, where I'm just like, I love you for everything you are in this night. And then I'm like, yeah. and then the next night I'm like, I love you for everything you are. Right. So like, I love all the women, and uh, like that. But then that gives me gets me in such trouble yeah. when it comes to like certain people because they want the complete opposite, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, no, no, like this is magical, this is beautiful, but like this is not gonna last. So I'm just like diving into that like first introductory phase. I it's guess it's so hard too, and it's like. Being my age and like dating and stuff is really hard because there's a lot of people that just like want to hook up. And I genuinely don't feel like I'm a hookup type of person. Yeah. Like ever since like my ex, like I haven't hooked up with anybody, I haven't like even kissed anyone. Like I'm just I'm not into it. Like I'll entertain the idea, but like when it comes down to it, I'm like, mm, I'm good. I'm good. Oh. You know? And so I don't know, like a lot of guys nowadays, especially when it comes to dating, like they just want to like hook up and like, you know, Want a little slow. Do they, uh, <laughs> as soon as they hook up, do they ghost? Or have you had that experience? Or Well, I don't even give like, them the chance to hook up, so yeah. I don't know. Cause but, I was and I play hard to get, too, because I'm like, eh, you're not really into my time. Like, right. You have to wine and dine me and, like, prove to me that, like, you actually want something so with me. So if they work harder, attention. you're more likely to, like, okay, so this guy isn't just trying to get Yeah, but they have to, I have to, like, actually be into them. Because it's yeah, like, I sure. can have guys, like, text me that are average. And I just, like, won't respond. So, for example, I went out, I want to say, like, last week, and I met um, a bunch of these Navy SEALs. And I can spot them out like nobody's business. I, like, walked up to them. They're all in, like, this group at Hannah's. And I go, you guys are either firefighters, Navy SEALs, or policemen, but I really think you're Navy SEALs. And they go, whoa. Like, how did you know this? Like, I'm so confused. Like, a Navy SEAL don't say they're Navy SEALs. But, like, I called them out drop some names of like people that I knew in like, you know, that industry. And they're like, oh my God. And so I got like this one guy's like number and stuff. And like he was cool to hang out with for the night and like became their friend and stuff. And then he like texted me the next day, didn't respond. Cause I'm like, eh, I'm not really into it. And then like he texted me like a week later and he goes, a white conservative man needs a good white conservative girl and you ghosting me is not very nice or something some something of that sort. Oh and I literally responded I responded with boo and like the ghost. <laughs> yes. I literally said boo and like yes. the ghost emoji. Dude. I did I was so free funny. message after that. Like I did oh, not get a respond. But I'm like, I'm not responding to you. I'm not I'm not genuinely That's interested. So good. Like you were so fun for that night, but bye. Okay, I have a question then. So if you were, it's probably not best just for you because every girl is different, but like uh, talk, like I used to be so bad with women mm-hmm. and I would read books on how to be better with women. I like, love that. Pick no, up, like, like pick thing. up culture or like, like how to pick up a girl. Like, dude, I was so unconfident. I grew up in a cult. I like, it was very, yeah. whatever, uh, very, I just, didn't know how, like, and I was also, yeah. I grew up ugly, pimply, et cetera, you know, so. But at least that wasn't your peak, you know? There's a lot of people that peak in high school, and you're like, Ooh. Oh, no, yeah, no, I think my peak's gonna be, like, 43. That's probably. I hope my peak's, like, when I die. <laughs> 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 Me over here, always growing, being better. <laughs> yes, uh, but, so I, uh, originally, people are like, you can't text a girl the next day because you don't want to see so de- desperate, and so I was, like, taking this advice and then I hit this point, I was like, I'm just gonna put my intention really fucking hard. And I, so now I do a thing where I, uh, I, I really like just put my intention out there right away. As you should. And then they either ghost right away, which uh, then I don't like, I'm like, okay, cool. Then they yeah. they obviously didn't want to be Don't be, be that guy me. to blow them up even right. if they're like ghosting. If they don't respond, it's for a fucking reason. Yeah, but I will text them the same night 
If they don't respond that night, I'm like, you got too drunk, so I'll text them the next night. It was like, nice to meet you. I've learned this new thing. If I take a selfie with them, like if I meet you like in person, I'll be like, dude, we should take a picture. And then I'll be like, yeah, I'm a this guy. Person. Because a lot of people just, you we're just so drunk. Many. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If and you're he, a hot like, girl. Today, this guy texts me and he goes, hey, how's it going, Mariah? And I was like, I'm so sorry I don't have your number saved. Like, mm-hmm. who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm Justin from, you know, so-and-so. And I was like, still. So what I'm asking. Like, I need to know who you are. So what I'm asking more for like guys like me out there is like, what is the best move? Like when you meet a hot girl these days, like do you text them right away? Like especially if there's a connection. Like right. if you're like if if you're just trying and this girl's like, huh, you know, then then you're it's not. I feel work. like there's like that's a trick question because it's like for me like I like just I just hang out with people like I don't even care like yeah you're fun like we're not doing anything you know like we're just out like about at yeah. the night. You know, and I'm going to be buds with you, but I know, like, deep down, I'm probably They're not going to gonna... text you the next day, but I'm being super cool with you yeah. that night. So it's probably giving them the wrong idea, mm-hmm. thinking I'm into them. Yep. And, then and I really feel try. like it's just, like, you have to text them the next day. No. And if they don't respond or anything or no. seem interested, you have to know, like, it was just fun for the night. Right. And, like, okay. that's just me personally, though. Like, I'm not big you on didn't it. give it them the wrong idea either. They just had unspoken expectations. And like, it, so it is sure really hard. Expectations are unspoken. So be like, hey, I'm not into it. Like, I like love chilling with you. Sure. I'm not like, I don't want to grab drinks. And you know, I'm not no, like, I don't want to keep this going. Sure. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm like, I think that's so hard too, because it's just like I'm, I'm not into that. Yeah. yeah not into it is it. very tricky, because did it start it, again? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, you guys I, fix that. I have, I have to, to pee, pee again. Oh my pee God. break. Pee break again. <laughs> I know. Oh, now I've heard without like, reservation. I know. I'm when I was like coming into this, I was like, what am I even going to talk about? Because like with my podcast, I have to have shit planned out. So I know. Because yeah. it's just me at that point. And I'm like, what am I going to say? Huh. Just me it. talking to myself. That was like, what my word was. I was just like, I'm going to run out of words. <laughs> I'm like, no, I can keep talking. I, I have, so my, I get it from my dad. My dad was such a talker. Mine too. And I can, I can talk for days. But what I've, what I've learned with podcasting is how to listen. And I've been getting better and better at listening. And I yeah. wasn't always good at, it, at this, but... I'm still not, but like I'll like when I'm editing, I'm like, dude, you didn't shut the fuck up. No, I'm the type where like I and I'm like sub like I'm like consciously like trying to become more self aware of this. It's like when somebody talks, I like an idea pops in my head or I have something to say about it, and I go, yeah, and I interrupt them, and I'm like, oh shit, like that. It's not. It's not pop. Like it's not good to do that. Yeah, it's it's and it's tricky because you don't want listening is a thing. You don't want to forget. Right. But you want to, like, you want to say your piece, but you don't interrupt. That's a tricky bitch. Like, I don't, I still don't know what to do about ADHD that brain. thing. Just not well. Mm-hmm. And share yeah. yeah. It's just, I feel like that's such a common thing with a lot of people, though. Like, you yeah. know, I, I see there's that a, a lot. There's a thing that somebody, uh, I forget who, but they said in, like, in dialogue, I think it's in relationships where you ask... Do you want advice or uh, or do you want a vent? Or do you want a vent? Yeah. So if you want a vent, then you shut the fuck up. If you want advice or like some suggestions, you chirp, um, chirp, chirp. <laughs> you chirp. Now I'm gonna but, start saying that. Thanks, I know guys. you. Are. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I don't know where I picked that up from. Kind of like in, it though. In well, re- nice. in reality, like it's just like okay, so like if if they're talking about a story, then then they're venting or they're telling their story, so right. you don't need to tell them. I resonate with this. I saw this. I, I had this situation earlier. Let me tell you about your my story yeah. about that. That's not what is needed. They're trying to tell their story about that. So you have to like, like let and them And there's go. like so many complications in like relationships with that. Like whenever like I would date people and I would just like have a bad day at work or there's something that really upset me. You can tell in my voice and like my tone and the way I'm like telling the story that I'm upset. Mm-hmm. I'm over here. I want you to agree with me and just like let me vent. But then I always had boyfriends that would just like give me their like two cents and like play devil's advocate. And I'm like, fuck those fuck boyfriends. Up. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> take my side. What are you doing? You know, like I get so mad. And I'm Dude, like, uh, yes. that communication is so important. Like no. I think communication is key in literally work environment, relationships, friendships, whatever you're in, like communication. Uh, you wanna, yeah, I want you to, I wanna vent. I want you to rub my shoulder. 
and I want you to agree with me the whole time. Just tell me I'm right. Even if, <laughs> even if I'm wrong. You know what? Later when I'm cooled down from the thing, like, hey, you know what? Like, we can talk about it later. No. Right now, just agree with me. <laughs> uh, well, it's nice being me because I am right all the time, like, in general. So it's really easy. <laughs> me as fuck. I'm like, I'm right all the time. You're wrong. <laughs> My opinion's the only right thing. Dude, who was it? There was like a, a, I think it's like Ben Franklin or one of the founding fathers of like the the U.S. <laughs> it was we like, over here trying to think. Okay. Uh, he was like, he was just saying something about how smart he was. And he's like, I'm wrong 50% of the time. And so somebody, oh, I know where I read it. Dude, yeah, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so bad at this. It's okay. No, <laughs> so I, love- I read the art of subtle, uh, the subtle art of, not giving a fuck. No, that's not the book. Oh, fuck. Um, it's how to win friends and influence people. Oh my god, I read Have that. You read it? So fucking good. Okay, I so read they it. They talked about this. Oh my god. Okay, I so love, I highly recommend. Good. It sounds very douchey of title, like oh, I'm gonna learn how to manipulate friends and win people, but it's actually a very beautiful. Uh, like, do you know how to really talk? listen do you want to be interested like actually listen it's like basically all the premises and one of the things that uh ben franklin said or somebody that they mentioned one of those guys one of those white (laughs) one of those white guys that wrote our constitution (laughs) but but they were like uh like i have learned all this stuff but i'm wrong at least 50% of the time. Yeah. So I'm like, if some of the smartest guys you know are wrong 50% of the time, how much do you think you're right? Exactly. And so it was like that. I'm like, dude, I always think I'm right. And Me then I'm too. like, wait, I'm stupid. So of course I'm not right all the time. Like, I don't what? think you're stupid. I think there's just different opinions and different perspectives and like understanding their perspective. You're like, oh, okay, I can see why you think this or why this is that. And stuff like that. Sure. Of course, when you think that you're right and everybody else is wrong. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I and like am, you're so stubborn am, on like, it. I'm not wrong, but you're also correct, and just like leaving space for that to happen. Right. Like, you know, but a right. lot, like a lot of people, actually, almost all people think they're right. Like, well, yeah, it's an ego course. thing as well. Too. You think you're right because it's your brain. And your thought you process. have that thought, so of course you think you're right. It's not a bad thing, but no. you're like, dude, this is how I see the world, so I, I'm right on this. I'm, yeah. But learning how to like hear another person's perspective is tricky. I will say that. So like um working in the bar industry, um I like my like main person, like my boss, um he was very good at putting me in check and like I'm the type of person will like say some inappropriate stuff at the wrong time and it's because I'm not like thinking of what I'm saying. But then I'm always thinking I'm right. But then he'll like sit me down and he was very good at this. He'd like sit me down and like tell me like, right, like I get why you think you're right, but this is like how other people are viewing it right now. And he was so good at that. And like having that conversation with me where I'm like, Dawn, you're so right. Like I, I get that perspective. You know what? Yeah. And I get it and I learn from it and I move on from that. And like, that's one thing I did like respect about like where I came from. It's just like, and how I've learned so much. It was so tricky because, like, for example, in my pot, like, in this environment, mm-hmm. because I run this, I will say whatever I want. As I you should. I will always say whatever I want, but I will still, like, not, I will not bring up a subject that, like, we talk about it's this. Touchy. I've talked about this with every, every bo- podcast guest I have. Whatever you don't want to be brought up, I won't bring up. Right. And if I did, then we'll edit it out. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. However, I, I cannot censor myself here. However, I've learned because I've been picking up shifts at like half half. I'm like, I think I need to censor myself here. You know, you like I'm like, oh that. no. I'm like, I like, I'm like, dude, I, I think I need to censor myself here. I don't want to censor myself in life, but I like I need oh, to censor shit. and like knowing those two grounds. And I think it's hard too, because it's like the shit that I do say is actually true. Yes. And it's very blunt and does hurt people's feelings. And like, I'll, I, I can't even give an example, but like, I will say something and then my boss will look at me and he's like, I can't believe you just fucking said that. But then like, we'll like, you know, <laughs> go like with just us and he'll be like, funny, it's funny. And it was very true and they needed to hear it. But the way you came about it was so wrong. And I'm like, you're right. See, in those moments, my bad. In those moments, <laughs> my bad. In those moments, you need your videographer to at least catch that and put it on TikTok. So that way, like, I'm like, the shit the, I say is This like, is so the much. shit that blows up. You're like, like I can't on. believe this bitch just said that. I'm like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I just said this. Like, and it, it hurt your feelings, but it's true. And no. that's the reason why it hurt your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people need to hear. 
<laughs> I do, and I'm like, I'm too much of that point, and I'm like, oh, sorry, I do need to like focus on how I say things and how I what? come about and it. And I think honesty needs to be brutal, but I think it should be consistent. And like when I say stuff, mm-hmm. like I'm not trying to say things to like hurt people's feelings. It's just it pops in my head, and I don't even think about it, and I just say it out loud. Yeah. So it's like I don't even think before I speak. Do you follow a uh, uh, Mark Norman? No, he's one of my favorite. Don't comedians. even know who that is. Sorry. He's a, he's a comedian. Okay. He's just like, but he's a like I, I think he said he's slightly on the spectrum of like autistic, but I he think is everybody a, is at he, some point. He blurts out like things, and he is one of the most like like quotable quippy dudes. Like he just says something. And it's so funny, but he's just like, dude, I get myself in trouble so much. I feel like that's how Theo Vaughn is. He's so mm-hmm. funny. Like, I just keep thinking about this one that he talks about, like, um, how girls can't swim. If you can't swim, I'm, like, not into you. <laughs> like, have you seen that one? Yes. Dude, I died. He's like, what if there's a hurricane and she's hopping on my back? Bitch, get the fuck off. Like, and I'm dying. I'm like, you're so right. Get the fuck off. Why can't you swim? Like, <laughs> Okay, so this is... Theo, we're gonna podcast together. Yeah, uh, please. I I am gonna pod, pod. He's gonna go on my vision board. So I have a vision board. Yes. Um, and the two people right now are Rogan, uh, Joe Rogan, and uh, Gary, I met him Gary. by the way. <gasps> what? Yes. So I worked for this place in 2016, 2017 when I lived in California, yeah. and it was this new spot. It's called Sonder. It was a restaurant like before they even opened. Went yeah. and interviewed whatever. Found out that the owner of that place, like one of the owners, he's a producer down in LA. Yeah. And like where I lived is Bakersfield, which is like an hour and a half away. And so like he has Valley all these. girl. I know. That's why you can hear that accent in me. <laughs> um, it's okay. I own that shit. I love it. I love it. Um, so like he was a producer and he's like friends with all these comedians. So like Gabriel Iglesias, yeah. like he actually paid for our bar. So that's like a $100,000 bar. What? That's like really nice over there. And, um, like, he comes and, like, makes stops. And then there's, yeah. like, Joe Rogan that came. And that was back in, like, 2016. Before, yeah. he, like, he was famous, but, like, not as big as yeah. he is today. Fear right, right. <laughs> Fear Factor famous. <laughs> and, like, Joe meeting Rogan him, famous. great dude. Like, yeah. nice human being. Like, you know, but, and it's just, like, I feel like it's a flex, but it's not a flex. And I don't like to be like, oh, I met this famous dude. person. But he's cool as fuck. Like, he's a genuine dude, like, in person. He and you never know that when it's put on social media. Because there's, like, some people where it's, like, Oh yeah, they seem really cool. Whereas like Adam Levine, douchebag. Yeah. Douchebag. But that he's like sense, cool, though. like on like you know TV yeah. and his music. But it's like in real life, asshole. But mm-hmm. then Blake Shelton, down to earth, mm-hmm. biggest sweetheart. So that's the thing. Yeah, that, there's so many things. That's the thing that happens with like what this is actually philosophy that he said. He's like you can't. Rogan said you can't fake your personality that long when you're live this long. So eventually, like the person that you are is gonna come out if you're podcasting. Like, yeah, and I love that. Like, and I like, love like famous people that like treat like normal people on the street like with respect. Yes. Because at the end of the day, you have to think like we're all going to the same place. Mm-hmm. We're all gonna go through the same thing. We're all gonna fucking die. We're all doing it. So it's like just because like I have more money than you or a little bit like more popular than you doesn't mean I'm better than you. Yeah. Any type like, of way. Do you for a job or do I expect you to like me because of my job? Exactly. Or just like nice money people. Like you treat the CEO you know? and the custodian the exact same way. And I think like that's that's mm-hmm. how I try to live my life, you know? Like I'm not a perfect person, but like I try to treat every single person with kindness regardless yeah. of who you are. And I've well, dealt with so many famous people where I'm like, you're such a douchebag. Well, they yeah. it's a, they yeah. say that uh, like money amplifies who you are. So if How you're, if you're kind, mm-hmm. you amplify your kindness. And if like so, there's there are like certain celebrities that are like the kindest to people, and they're like homies. And then there's the other ones that are the opposite. Right. But like they both got famous, but they were already douches before they were famous. Right. Like, and yeah. These there's guys certain people. Like, yeah. Right. Like you know? um. So when I like worked downtown and like in the club scene and everything, like we would get like famous people to come to us and like host like their after parties or like just come get bottle service with sure. us. And there was this one. Oh God, I can't remember the main guy's name. But there's this one guy. His name's DC the Don. Like he plays like good music. I listen to his music just rare because I don't really listen to anybody's music. Um, You like NPR. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not really into it. Um, (laughs) I like had bottle service with him. He was so kind, very personable, like 
always had a conversation with me every time I checked on their table. Like he was so sweet to me and like treated me as a normal person, even though he makes money, he's famous, he's a check mark, whatever. Yeah. But then there was um, this other guy that he like performed for and I, you know what, I want to say his name, but I can't even remember it. And it, so like we have this policy at the club that I worked at where like you can't have like a hood on, right? So like he came with his hood on and like my head of security was like, bro, you gotta take this off. He threw a fit, you know? And he had asked us prior to going there, like he wanted a free bottle, yeah. which the yeah. bottle that he wanted was like $450, just a bottle of Patron, but I'm just like, we charge for this stuff. But it's like, you didn't even plan it with us, but we're gonna be nice enough to give this to you sure. for free, expecting you to buy more, right? So like he came in, we had to tell him to take his hood off and like the guy that like came like, his hood was like his like personality and like his like niche. Like yeah, people yeah. knew him for that, right? That's like the, the He look. got pissed, yeah. He got pissed, he walked out, he's outside of like the bar that I'm worked at and I was like, okay, well like I'm, since I'm the manager, like I'm gonna go out there and like have a conversation with them. And I go, hey, like just curious, like why aren't you like coming in? Like what's the problem? Like how can I help you in some type of way for you to have a good night? Yeah. Trying to be nice. And then his friend speaks for him. I'm talking to him. I'm looking him in his eyes. And he like looks at me, looks away and like waits for his friend to respond. I'm like, rude, number one, Damn. fuck you. And so he like, his friend's like, oh no, like his hood is thing. And I'm like, okay, like maybe I can talk to the general manager. Maybe we can figure it out just for you. You know, like oh, trying man. to be nice. And then the guy looks at me and he goes, um, nah, fuck this. I don't want your fucking bottle service. Like cuss me out. And I looked at him, and, he, and then he's like, I made, I just made 10 Gs at this concert. Like, fuck you guys. You guys aren't even worth it. And I go, you just made 10 Gs, and you can't even pay $300 for a bottle? That just shows me how broke you are and how you're not good enough to enter my bar. Yeah. And I walked away. I was like, I don't even want you here, and I'm going to make sure you don't. Dude. Oh, fuck. What was his name? It was like, not Snake. It starts with an S. Um. I don't even know. Stupid ass bitch. Stupid, <laughs> stupid motherfucker. <laughs> and like I left and then like my GM pulled me aside and he's like, why was he rude? Like, you know, like, you know, trying to talk to me and figure out the situation. And I was like, dude, like I personally, because he wants free stuff, but then he's being so rude to us and like being so entitled and like flaunting his money. I'm like, you can go talk to him. Like I'll serve him still and be kind to him. But I'm like, I personally don't want to deal with him. Yeah. And so he's like, all right. So he goes out there and he talks to him and he goes, he says the same thing I do. He's like, bro, at the end of the day, we're both human. You're not above us. And I don't even want you in my bar too. Like it no. pissed my GM off. And my Shit. GM came back to me. He's like, no, you're right. Like we're not want him in there. Dude, that's. Yeah. It's like famous people. It's like, you have to like be kind. But that's What's okay. That? And like, don't expect shit. But if he's, uh, so here's the thing that I, I have noticed. So you're, you've been a bartender for quite a while, right? A hot uh, minute, yeah. yeah. So like you start to notice people that flex too hard are Don't actually really the opposite, much. right? You're like, broke as fuck. So, yeah. like, if you, you no if you are a, right. like, if you are Theo Vaughn, you don't just go into a club and be like, I just made or 10 Theo G. Theo Vaughn, like, I got right. this. No, he, he won't do that. Because he doesn't be need to. He doesn't need to. No. Like, so when, when you see somebody doing mm -hmm. that, you're like, dude, you're a flexor. You're actually not. Like, and so yeah. you start to learn that in bartending. Like, a, you like, do. Or, yeah. like, like, meeting people. It's not just bartenders that realize it. Yeah. Exactly. And like, I, and I, I've noticed that a lot too in like bartending and stuff. And I'm just like, you meet a lot of like different types of people and like mm -hmm. interesting people. Like I met these like pilots who they do like private, like, um, flying for like jets and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. so they had just gotten back, um, from flying like Kim Kardashian and her okay. kids and like all of that stuff on their private jet and sure. everything like that. And they're like the most humble people, yeah. so sweet. They gave me both their personal numbers. They're like, if you ever wanna be a mm -hmm. flight attendant for us, like go through this school, we'll show you it, you know, like what school to go through. And then like, you can like be a flight attendant for us. You yeah. make X amount of money. Like they were so like kind and humbled, even though they make a fuck ton of money. Yeah. They see a lot of famous people. Like they just flew Kim Kardashian and they flew like Justin Bieber and Hailey Bieber yeah. and like, high up like a-list celebrities yeah, yeah. and like they're so humble and i'm like and i had texted them previously you know when i was like in my job search and they were so kind gave me all information like yeah. wanted to hang out like being buds and i'm like respect have you ever uh read this reminds me of, of this book but have you read um the go-giver yes i've read that too oh my it's, god you have my entire library it's so good okay so what this reminds so me of that because if you're like 
you would like you assume if somebody's rich that they are uh, uh, they're a flexor and they do this and they're a douchebag. But the actual like the really good people that make it, whether it's business or music or whatever, they're actually really kind. They so really want to give back. Like they they actually really prefer to like mentor blah 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 exactly. and spend time with someone. Exactly, it's so true. Like like if you. The guys that don't want to give you any time, or they flex, or like, oh, I can't believe you did that. Like, I just made ten k. Like, no, yeah, you did. Exactly. Like, you're being a you dick. You didn't. Like, but you like, didn't. Anyone that I've ever asked for help, like, because I I haven't made shit. Like, I, I no, yeah. But if I when I ask of like a really successful person that I respect, they help me. Like, uh, like and you hey, know what? Me- that just like shows their character and who they are as a person. And I'm like, you can go so much farther in life being a good human being, being humble. But like giving back as well, because the more you give back, the more you'll receive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's how I view it. And it's just like, yeah. No, I yeah. completely agree. I have a question for you. Okay, I'm ready. Do you how do you navigate God and bartending? Um, so <laughs> so I have this really fucked up persona. Okay. <laughs> so God created wine. And Keep you going. can get drunk off wine it it's, says it in the bible it says it he in the turned, bible okay. i mean he didn't he's not like yeah let's go party and let's go get messed up but at the end of the day you have to realize like a lot of god's disciples like are murderers yeah they're like rapists they're like all these horrible people that like in today's day and age would be in prison or like you know back then would be like freaking hung. so you're talking like about- you know what i mean like you know not well and so it's just like all of, he like died for our sins, so I just like. So we, uh, sorry, I should no, have. Uh, 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 I don't know. Reiterated. Uh, yeah. Reiterated. Um, the Jesus God, the Bible God, because there are. Um, They're like different, like. Different perspectives of right. God, uh, but yeah. So yeah, like. So, so like, Bible I mean, God. yeah, like I serve alcohol. Like I don't any. I mean, I do, but I don't anymore. Sure. So I am. Um, I work for this one bar, but they're under renovation till yeah. like October. I don't even know. Do, like it's can, just. Can we name the bar? I guess so. It's called Cowgirls in Cuna. Um, oh, they're pretty under awesome. Renovation? They're, they're fun. Oh. Yeah, they're oh, under yeah. renovation. Um, I actually love it I've because. I've never been there. So here's the thing, and this is so funny that you like we're talking about the subject is that the owner. Um, I don't even know if I can name him. I I don't know if you respect good. that, but um, he is such a good human being. Yeah. Um, he is like the strongest Christian I do uh-huh. know. Like Hell he. Yeah. He is actually like trying to create this whole theology class for one of the churches here in Boise. Oh, dope. Um, and he's like one of the strongest Christians I know. Like every single conversation I have, he always like incorporates like God and like scripture and like Jesus. Like, yeah. He's so proud of who he is and that's something I respect. And he treats his like employees and everybody in the industry kindly. Yeah. And like has like a certain set morale. And like that's something to respect because you don't really find that in the bar mm-hmm. industry. Yeah. Um, I mean there's money in it and like everybody has to make money sure. some type of way and some type of how. But like the way he runs it, like I respect automatically. Yeah. Um yeah, like we're serving drinks, you're serving alcohol. Um, I don't think it's such a taboo in a sense to drink, um, but that's my own perspective. Yeah. But also like when you're in the bar industry, like you're tip certified. Yeah. So when being ter- tip certified, there's like a lot of regulations to that. So it's like, for example, let's say I got you like completely messed up at my bar, like drunk as shit. And then you leave and you get in your car and the police saw you leave the mm-hmm. place that we work at and you drive away and you get a DUI. They can come back to us and like hurt our liquor license, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like charge us with that as well for over serving, stuff like that. So I think there's like a huge regulation with it. So whenever I see somebody like too messed up and I'm like, oh, you're ordering a drink, I'm very nice about it and it's the way you go about it too. It's like, oh no, like you want a vodka crayon? Here's a water instead. And I look at them and I smile and I'm like, you're gonna thank me in the morning. Like I've been in your shoes, like you're a little too drunk. Chug this water. If you want this, I'll give it to you. It's just like showing that you care too. Has that Um, happened with you guys? Uh, Or like with you personally where you got like, um, because I've always- I have so many bar stories. So- Oh God, I'm nervous. I've been a bartender for at least 10 years. Right. Maybe 12. Yeah. And I've always, I've done tips certification so long. Right. uh, And they always say that like you can actually be held responsible. Beep. Beep, 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 beep. Are you going back in? Is it recording? You break? I don't know. It's good. Uh, we can take a break. Whenever no, 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 I'm good. Um, but when 
so I've I've done tip certification right. probably like I don't know, fifty times. Six so you times, have to renew it every right? three years. Yeah. So they always say that, and I have seen people get busted on um, like serving an underager. You know, like somebody who didn't have an ID. You know, you get the uh, right. whatever that cop is that like comes in and yeah. you know, tries to do the thing. Um, yeah. But I haven't heard any actual story of somebody over serving someone and then them getting either arrested or whatever and like them getting in actual trouble. Yeah. Have you have you I heard that? I haven't like experienced that, but I feel like the bars that I did work for were very good about it. Yeah. Because um, we are on everyone's ass. We do make sure that they do have like their tip certification That's and that fair. they're like applying that. I will say like the place that I did work for was very good about it and yeah. very professional about that and the training is pretty good. But I see um, like when you, cause I'm a dive bar guy. Yeah. And I'm like, I see some sloshy ass people And they people support store, and it's because and I, people uh, want to make that tip. I'm and like, God know. damn dude, yeah, how have you not getting in trouble yet? God damn. Wow. I bet it's hard to tell if it's like super busy. Well, yeah. honestly, like I, can, you can see in their eyes the way they order, the way like their demeanor is and like you, I can like, I pay attention to them before I even serve them sure. and stuff. So I, I felt like I was pretty good at that. Um, but no, yeah, I've had, <laughs> yeah, I've been cut <laughs> off before. Like even as a bartender, I've been cut off. Like I'll even when I was off. bartending, I was, I've been blocked out serving people yeah. drinks and like <laughs> so embarrassing, but Same. you know, by the grace of God, like my number was still on at the end of the night and I made stupid amounts of tips and like my poor count was still fine. And you know, love my job for, loving me through that yes. one because yeah. that was rough, <laughs> very rough. I was going through some shit. Yeah, I was going through some shit Hell and they yeah. still love me for it. So we love that. But um, no, I've dealt with like some people, I've actually gotten in some fights at the place that I did work at yeah. for a long time. Um, funny story. So uh, <laughs> I think it was like, it was two summers ago. It's been a minute now. Um, so me and my friend, uh, she worked with me. We went to um, a tailgate for like, you know, the Boise State games and stuff before work, yeah. got a little like drunk. And she is like waiting in line to go to the bathroom and she's like knocking on the door, didn't know if anybody was in there because it was a single person a bathroom. Open, like knocks on the door and like um, somebody yells like, I'm in here, whatever. She opens the, the, the girl in there, opened the door, saw my friend and it was like, so the guy that she was dating at the time that's her ex-boyfriend or whatever. So like she or automatically hated her, right? Pushed my friend, punched her in the face. What? Like drama, drama, right? My friend, I'm not there at the moment. My friend runs and finds me because my friend's not a fighter, but I will fight for my friends no matter freaking what. Like if you hurt my friend, I'm gonna hurt you. <laughs> not, not a pretty girl thing to do, but I did it. Oh. Um, she like comes at me, like my friend comes at me and she's like, dude, this girl just punched me in the face. I was like, there's no way. Like I'm over here like a little tipsy, I'm like, Let's go handle this situation. So I go up to the girl and I'm like, dude, like you just punched my friend in the face. She gets mad at me. She pushes me. She swings. I hit her. She falls to the ground. Uh -huh. And then my boyfriend at the time has to step in and like he's pushing me and this girl away. He pushed us at the same time. The girl falls on the ground. I just step back. Like he didn't push us hard. He yeah. pushes equally the same. These guys come up to my um, boyfriend at the time. And they're like, you hit a girl, like you do all this. And I'm like, that pissed me off. Cause I'm like, he doesn't hit girls. Yeah. So I like, my boyfriend's like holding me back and I push my boyfriend back and this guy's in my boyfriend's face and I just deck him as hard as I can. He falls to the ground and then like just disappears. And I like have it on my Snapchat. Like oh, my no. boyfriend has like a <laughs> bloody nose, but then like my hand is all messed up from hitting that guy. Yeah. Flash forward, okay. So uh, like the weekend later, we're bartending, me and my friend that had gotten hit in the face originally. And um, the guy that like tried to get in the fight with us, uh, he ordered a Corona from me. And I was like, yeah, like whatever, you know, here's, here's your Corona. And we have a handheld. So he's like on the handheld and he sets it down. And the handheld that I was using was actually my friend's. Sure. So I grabbed the wrong one. She grabs that handheld because it's already sitting down. She grabs it, the guy gets mad, grabs it out of her hand and like starts cussing at her. So I see this happen. I'm pissed, right? I'm yeah. livid. I'm like, uh-uh, you do not treat my friend with disrespect after everything that just happened. Mm -hmm. So I go over there and I go, no. I grab the handheld out of his hand, I grab the corona, and I go, fuck you, get out of my bar. And he like, looks, girl. he like looks at me, like puts his hands up like he's gonna hit me. So now I'm even more pissed. I literally jump up as high as I can and I just hit him. 
across the bar. I just hit this guy across the bar. Nice. He falls to the ground, and my security, the security uh, where I worked at, is so good at their job. Yeah. And he ran, came, picked the guy up, and dragged him out. Yeah. And like, it's just like crazy ah, things like that. Like, I'm not afraid to hit you. Like, if you're disrespecting my bartenders and being this way, no. yeah, and like trying to hit me, to you're gonna hit a girl. Goodbye. Dude, Good I just yourself. um. So that's that's nuts. Yeah, that's no, it's nice. The, <laughs> crazy story, yeah. <laughs> the, There's even more crazy stories. I don't even know if I can say it on here though. Like, you it's can not say whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> you only have to decide if you want it to be said. <laughs> yeah, I probably get anxiety the next day. I'm like, oh, I <laughs> said this one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk after. Yeah, we'll talk after. I'll tell those stories after. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Uh, it's I was I just started a show in Cinda uh, Californication, and there's this. I don't know if you know the show. Um, it's on. Showtime. I've heard of it, never seen it though. Yeah, uh, uh, David Coveney is a G, but there's this scene where there's these girls fighting. And they're like, you fuck my man. And they start getting in. Fair and, enough. <laughs> and some guy starts to try to like grab in and he pulls him back. And he's like, never get involved with a chick fight. Because if you push a girl, if something if some happens, say something. you're going to get, you're going to get fucked. Like, uh, uh right. well, like, um, domestic violence. In a sense. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like so do like, like a, you like assault or something. Let them do de- Like, they're going to have to do it look out. bad as a dude. Yeah, he's just like, but it was like kind of funny, but he's like, never get involved. Don't involved. get involved. Yeah. yeah no, 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 just let them do it. They, I know. They're going to do like, whatever they're going to do. But if you get involved and somehow your hand swings backward, whatever the fuck, it's You're gonna get drama. Yeah, yeah. No, I I will say like you know, I know how to defend myself. Um, and I and I used to get in fights. You know, like eighteen through twenty two. Um, used to get in fights all the time. And now that I've gotten older, I've realized like pretty girls don't fight. Like I'm not gonna fight anybody unless like my life depends on it. I've never fought. I've and never I'm not gonna like actively try and do that like I just don't think it's cute it's like such a trashy thing to do but like I have done it like 100% like I think it's hot personally I don't know it just depends on the situation and it's like you have to really push me to that part where I'm like okay let's let's go sis like let's go you know what I mean but like it it takes me to that point and it's so fun because it's like I'm like not the biggest girl and like I come off as like a huge belly girl and everything but it's like when you put me there like don't underestimate me because i got i got do you train do i train like uh do you actually do any sort of like formal training like uh Um, muay thai slash uh i used to uh, do jujitsu for a little bit um i did jujitsu for a little bit i did kickboxing when i was younger um my dad is in the marine corps my brother was like an old-time wrestler so i know like wrestling moves and stuff and then my brother always taught me like you're going to be in these situations, Mariah. Like, this is what you do yeah. if a girl pulls your hair. Like, this is what, like, my brothers have taught me. And, like, I'm so grateful for that because it has saved my life in many different occasions. No. But, like, I don't, like, I don't flaunt that or, like, I look for a fight. Like, that. I don't think that's attractive. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to be uh, capable of defending yourself. But, like, you know, I am a pacifist mostly because I'm incapable of, you know, defending Right. <laughs> right. But like I'm I, like, like hey, I'm really same. Small. You can just go ahead and then punch me in the face, Jesse. You know, Dude, the old. Do. Yeah, but like, and then I see like my friends that are like that too. I'll have a lot of friends that are like that, and I'm just like, okay, if I see them get hit though, I will step in in two seconds yeah. because I'm more of a type like you can hit me all you want, but like you touch my friend, game over. I got pushed yeah. by this girl one time. Oh, the makes me mad, right? Out with me, and then uh, we get in the car, and I'm like, if she knew was here, this never would happen. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. You're over here, like, Living. Like, <laughs> I I think that the only reason that I've not gotten in a fight, not because I'm a pacifist, but I'm a pussy. And I back down <laughs> like so hard. I'm just like I've I've I'm because I'm a shit talker and Me I will too. shit talk. But as soon as like an angry guy at a bar, like uh like one time this uh have you ever had a when you're like backing into it like you're driving, you're backing into a, something and somebody hits your car and makes yeah. you think that you uh um, wrecked into something, so yeah. bop, you know, yeah. like I did. We used to do it in high school, you know, like smack the side of the car. Yeah, and you're like, oh fuck, did I hit someone? Right. So I always thought that was funny. Like I did it in high school, and then I did it at some like uh, outside some bar one time, and this big beefy dude gets out. Is just like, what the fuck did you do that for? I was like, ooh, sorry, and then, my bad. But like, but I, I always just like, I'm just like, dude, I'm so sorry. Can I buy you a drink? Like. 
I'm a pussy. Like right. I don't want to get hit. I don't want you to hit me. Right. And I always like de-escalate really quick. That's good though. And, like, yeah. So I've never been hit yet. I've never been hit in the yeah. face. And I've never hit anyone in the face. I've been hit in the face once at work, and wow. that was totally I deserved it. One, I will own up to that. Shit. Just like straight into the nose. Yeah, like by this. a girl, and Oof. so I was bartending. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. So I was bar. Go on. I, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I was I was bartending one time, and I was like, you know, dating the guy that I dated for like two years and stuff. We were like on and off and on our off part. Um, I had like been with this other guy that I've been friends with for a while and then I went back to my ex you know whatever those two yeah exactly (laughs) those two show up and they're at my bar top at the same time they turn their heads notice each other start talking you know and they find out like what had happened I'm like I'm gonna kill myself like what the hell is going on like I'm like nervous you know and I'm bartending and I'm like (gasps) like I have to be nice to everyone I'm like focus on them so they find out what goes on, they get pissed, and rightfully so, and rightfully freaking so. And they like throw a drink on me, but I get so mad, I get so furious, I walk around the bar, and I go to like my ex-boyfriend at the time, and I like try and grab his drink and like throw it on him yeah. and like throw it off, because I'm like, fuck you, you know? Well, the drink falls on this girl. <sighs> instead not him and I'm like oh shit didn't mean that you know she goes what the fuck and I'm like I'm sorry it wasn't for you but I'm still pissed at them still focused on them she walks up decks me right in the face oh. and I like eat it like a champ I will say that I go and I'm like now I'm pissed I'm like I want to hit you now you know so I go like swing back to like hit her her boyfriend like ends up picking me up and like tossing me and I go and once he tossed me I think I'm so glad nobody saw this. I'm going to run back behind that bar because I will get fired. Like, that was 100% (laughs) my fault. And it was, you were on the clock too, right? Yeah, I was on the clock. I was bartending. I'm over here causing issues. And I was just like, you know, like, that was such a bad move on my part on all ends in every different perspective. Oh, my God. So I just ran back behind that bar. And nobody knew. Security didn't see. Bartenders didn't even notice. We were that busy. I got so blessed in that moment. It was like. So you never got in trouble I never got in trouble. I don't even think they know about it. So. Hell Sorry. yeah. It doesn't matter. You're, <laughs> it doesn't you're matter. I don't work there anyway. Dude, but it's that's just like, dope. Yeah, no, that was like, I yeah, I was like, I got hit in the face. I was like, well deserved on that's... so many different levels. And I just ate it and I like, took it like a champ. Oh yeah, my no, God. Not worth it. That was like the only time I've ever been hit in the face. Like every time I've been in a fight, never been hit in the face. I'm... Knock on freaking wood. I, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, yeah. Well, no, thank no you. one yeah. wants to get in the face. No, it doesn't. Well, some, no, some people do, it doesn't guess, feel good. So. It's not. It's not a great feeling. Do you think it did? It ignite any adrenaline? Oh yeah, like, I was shaken because I was like, uh, I'm gonna go like huh. whoop some ass. Just leave? <laughs> yeah, she didn't even notice I was the bartender. That's the crazy thing. Like, well, they didn't okay. even know I worked <laughs> there. They didn't even know I worked. So fast. It was so fast, and I was like. You, like, you saved my life, in a sense, for picking me yeah. up for not hitting your girlfriend because then I would have been thrown out or, like, yeah. my boss would have came down. What the fuck? Valid. See, valid. 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 Like, you are so in the right. So some of my friends that have been in fights told me, they're like, dude, you need to be in a fight because... You don't feel it when you it get gets hit, like, though. yeah, you get it. You get you the don't adrenaline, feel it. all the stuff. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think I want to do it. Sorry. But it's so nerve wracking. Like I can't understand that. But I, like, of course, I'm going to get beat up. I'm like a skinny guy. Like, yeah. like whoever I end up getting with in a fight with eventually is going to beat the shit out of me. And I don't want there's that. always somebody bigger and stronger than you. That's like you have to understand that. So it's like, I don't really want to get I've yeah. been beat up a couple of times. But not a <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> I've been beat up a couple of times, know, but uh, he's you. in prison, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> That was fun time, yeah. Dude, so. you're like, yeah, but I'm gonna get the last laugh. I'm gonna fuck your mom. Literally, though, I'm gonna do something. <laughs> Too bad his, yeah, I'm gonna say, I almost said a dark joke, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, I thought mine was. Um, Damn, no, this is I had darker. To, yeah. Like, <laughs> you can say it. <laughs> no, you don't have to. I was like, I'd fuck your dad, but he banded you, so I don't know. So, okay, so, uh, <laughs> you sound like Jazz. <laughs> I'm even sorry, that's so bad. Okay, my roommate, uh, she's <laughs> so gonna bad. hate me for this. She was like, <laughs> she was yelling at this girl, uh, this dude that she used to fuck. <laughs> And she was like, get the fuck out. Keep walking. Walk faster. And she walks outside. She's like, this is why your dad cheats on your mom. 
See, like, <laughs> when I'm mad, I go for the throat, and, like, I know what will hurt your feelings, and that's, no. like, such a bad oh. thing. But I think I learned that, like, in childhood, because my brothers are so much older than me, yeah. and they would, like, beat me up as any Siblings, other, like, yeah. sibling would. Mm -hmm. Like, not, like, awful beat me up, right. but, you know. No. Manhandle me a little bit. Yeah, rough house. Wow. Well. And it's like, I could never defend myself, so I would just use words. Mm -hmm. And I would just hurt their feelings, and they'd stop in their tracks and be like, yep. you're mean. I'm like, well, that's how we can hurt you. That's, how, that's <laughs> how And I, I learned that, was. and that's I can't I help was. it. And it's like, I go for words more I than like I can be fists. so cutting. I can be so cutting. I will say cutting. something that hurts you, and you'll think about it for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. Like, yeah. I will, I will. So awful. And I, th I actually think that is more hurtful than a, a, like a punch in the it, face. Words hurt more than like. Yeah. And like. And I never was able to defend myself this way. I was exactly. always skinny. I was always like weak. Exactly. But I like learned quick stuff and I learned like how to like poke at the, like poke, poke the at the things. Sense. Yeah. 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 Wow. No, I am. So like, as you guys know, like I'm a domestic violence survivor and stuff. And so like, I've always thought about this. I'm like, I would much rather, and this sounds so shitty to even say, but I would much rather him <coughs> beat my ass than do the like emotional abuse that he did to yeah. me. Cause I was just like, I'd rather like get hit cause the pain goes away. Whereas like the emotion stuff doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, that fucks with your head. It oh, fucks with your head much. so much. Yeah. And you're like sitting on that forever. Yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah, no. Um, I don't know how it's to. So crazy. I don't know how to get over that shit because, like, yeah, you can get over getting hit in the face. You but can't. You can't get over like someone poking at your own and like whether it was like your own your own insecurity or like whatever. Then own like, problems that uh, you like had. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's so hard. But then you have One to the think. Situation and the other one. Exactly. Just like I don't know. But like I, there's like these sayings where it's like hurt people hurt people or yes. like misery loves company yep. and like you have to remind yourself like. These people are so miserable that so they miserable. Want, don't want to be alone in their misery. So they're going to try and make you as miserable as they are. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're saying the things mm -hmm. they are. Or like people say like awful things because their own insecurities and it comes from that and they're hurt. Not because like it's actually true. No. Even you though sometimes it is true. But it's like. There are excuses and you can understand something, but not wait and not to not hate it. But you don't have to accept it. And also heal people, heal people. Exactly. So, There's like so many true. different genres. Can I ask you a question? This is very uh, to this topic of um, uh, abusive relationships. This is something yeah. that I personally can't, haven't figured out a way to understand. Okay. I listened to both of your podcasts. Okay. And I have even talked about it to myself and one of the people. And I, I'm uh, it's excited tricky. For this question. But I, I don't understand why people stay. And I and so I would love for you to tell me because like uh, and I'm not saying that. No, I love this. I love this question. But I get so I'm just like, dude, fucking leave. And, and so there's I, so and much. I, there's, obviously, okay. Oh so, my god, I'm so excited that you asked this question. Okay, I yes, might go, go on a tangent it. for like one second. Let's go. Uh, do you want to do you want a pee break? Pee break, and yeah. then we can go back. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, perfect. I did want to talk to you about this. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, we're pee breaking. breaking. So we were talking. What were we talking about? About um, the dude that was like abusive or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And oh, what my question yeah. is yeah. is how like because I have never been abused, and then when I, when I hear about somebody that is abused because I know some people abused, I'm like get the fuck out, you know. And I was yeah. like, like I just didn't understand. So when I was listening to your podcast, I was like, dude, I feel so bad, but like. You feel why, bad for them. But, like, why do they stay? So I just want to, like, I would love to right. have you just share what happens. So there's um, this thing. It's called cycle of abuse. Mm -hmm. And you think, like, everybody knows about it. But there's not a lot of people that mm -hmm. know about it. There's a lot of, like, in the cycle of abuse. And I talk about it in my, like, second podcast. If you want to watch it on Shipwrecked. Yeah. But anyways. Um, so basically, like, when I first got into this relationship, and I didn't realize this was happening to me, and you don't realize it, it's love bombing and they love bomb you and they like do all these nice things for you. And like when they do these things for you that you're not used to and they just like praise you in a sense, you, your body releases like serotonin levels and mm -hmm. like different type of like chemicals in your body that naturally like produces, right? And then they become awful to you. And you're like, oh my God, what did I do? And like you love them because they were so kind to you and you're they're so sweet. And like, yeah. oh my God, I did something wrong. And so you're like, you're missing those chemicals that your body naturally releases. And those chemicals that are released, it acts literally, I 
read so much stuff on this. It acts as a drug, like heroin mm -hmm. almost, because it's so addictive. And so you're like craving that sense. And then they go back into that cycle where you're like wanting it back. And then they give it to you and you feel refresh, refreshed and you're like, okay, they give it back to me, like everything's good. And so you get stuck in that cycle. Mm -hmm. And it's because like, we were just talking about this, like we love so hard and like yeah. you want to give people like the benefit of the doubt and like they love you so much and you think that, but in reality, it's just the way they're like abusing you, you know? Yeah. So like you, your body craves that and they, you start craving them and craving what they had originally gave you. And so you become addicted to it. Like so you're a drug like a addict drug. to them. Yeah. They, you, they're your drug, okay. literally in a sense. So it's like you accept it and you make excuses for them because they like love bomb you to where it's like they're awful, then they're good again, and then they're awful and they're good again. So it's like this whole cycle and that's how you get sucked in. And it's like me, like even like in a healthy relationship and it's so bad, like my last relationship, super healthy. Like he was not bad in any type of way. Ended it on like nice terms, like he wasn't awful. Sure. Shout out to Bernard. Uh, yeah, to whoever you are. I'm not gonna sing her name. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, like he he was great. He was yeah. great, and I was I was super sad about it. And like I like still crave that energy that he had given me. But it's just like it wasn't in a toxic way. Yeah. And it's like you miss that, and you miss what you like you originally had. And so like in some sense, like you always will get that. But it's like they use that. The abusers use it to their advantage. Yeah. And they like take advantage of that, and that's how you can get stuck. But then also, like, in my circumstance, like, when he got arrested originally, there was no contact order. And then he had still contacted me and then made me feel guilty for everything that I had put him through, like, prison or, like, jail and stuff. And then, like, I still had, like, my belongings at his house. And, like, that was the only thing I ever owned. Like, it was, like, my bed, my furniture, uh, my dresser, like, half my clothes and my shoes. Like, that's the only thing I ever had. And he like held that hostage in a sense. Mm -hmm. So he's like, if you don't contact me, then like you're not getting you this and you have to go through court to get okay. it. And I'm like, okay, so I played his little game and then I ended up getting it, you know? But then sure. like I broke through it because I got to that point. Quick story. Sorry, I know we're on like no, a time crunch. Dude, you're good. It's um, so quick we'll story. Well, no, if he knocks on the door. Okay, like, perfect. It's just my taxi driver. No, you're good. <laughs> this is really great. Um, so I reached this point to where it's like I knew he was being abusive and I knew what he was doing, but I still couldn't leave, right? Yeah. Like it got to the point where like I moved to California and he came to California with a trailer and packed all oh, my stuff oh. and was like, come back to me. And I'm like, okay, he loves me, you know? Meanwhile, big show up. yeah, like, like Everybody you know, I ate it up. Love bomb. Exactly, it'll be love different. Bombs. Yeah, love bomb. He was love bombing, he was love -bombing me okay. in that moment. Um, and then like I would move out and be like, I'm done, I'm done. And I would move like, you know, a little bit away, still in Boise with him, but like we're at different places and he would show up at my spot when we're broken up and like cause a ruckus for my friends and I. And to where the point like it's putting my friends in danger. Yeah. So I like cared about my friends. So I'm like, I would leave, you know, and move back with him just so my friends are safe. So it's like you put in these shitty situations. Yeah. So it got to the point to where like he came home one day and he is just having a bad day and I knew it and I had dinner already ready for him because that's just like the girlfriend I am like no matter what and dinner was ready for him and he was just pissed and he goes get in the car we need to have a talk and I'm like okay like whatever you know I'm shaking at this point because I know like how this is gonna go his demeanor like I know how he is I'm like oh god abuse is gonna come you know scared put my shoes on and we get in my car and I was driving a Camaro at the time and I'm like, I'm shaking. And he's screaming at me before we even get in the car. And like a tear falls down from my face, but I'm like trying to keep my like composure. And so I sit in and then like I sit in there and like he can see a tear fall as I'm like trying to be like serious. And he goes, you're always fucking crying. Like stop crying, you know, like screaming at me. I'm like, okay, like, sorry, you know, like I don't mean to be emotional. Like I just know like tension's coming. Mm -hmm. And I was like, where would you like to drive? And he was like, drive wherever, like screaming at me. So I'm like, okay, so I'm driving around the neighborhood and he like tells me to pull over. So I pull over and he like, you know, 
Two days later, he's gonna go on this vacation to Canada with his um, stepdad and gonna go on this huge fishing trip, right? So we pull over and he just starts talking to me and he goes, I don't like you, you're a piece of shit. Like just degrading me on every single level. And he goes, I want nothing to do with you. You don't make me happy. I wanna see other people. And I really think that you should move back to California because I'm gonna still be here in Boise. And like, this isn't your town, this is my town. Like trying to own up to all this stuff. And I'm like crying and like, I'm like, okay. Like I'm just agreeing with him. I'm like, okay, like that's fine. Like, you know, whatever. And like at the time, um, like because I was going through so much abuse, like I had like, this is like very like TMI almost, but like I had like um, been suicidal in those points where I was just like, I can't handle the abuse anymore, sure. you know? And he knew that. And so he took that to his own advantage. No. And he goes, Mariah, and this is the where I noticed in my own, like where I needed to leave. He looks at me straight in the face and he goes, Mariah, this is what I want you to do and I need you to promise me you're gonna do it. And I go, anything, anything, you know, anything, whatever, what is it? He goes, when I go to Canada, I want you to kill yourself. What the fuck? Yeah, he goes, I want you to kill yourself and I wanna come home to you dead on the floor because nobody's gonna miss you and you out of my life is Dude, gonna be the fuck best that. thing ever. Like, you know, and I'm like, who's this person and yeah. what's his address? Cause we're about to- um, that? That okay. Some prison, hey. some prison in Twin Falls. Can I ask <laughs> you, is, was that the last time or did you- No, did you this was not the last time. Oh my God. See, that's what I don't understand. I'm like, what the fuck? So, so crazy. Piece of shit. Oh yeah, like, my no, God. See, like, everybody really freaks out when I, I tell know. Okay. Everyone freaks Sorry, out. Everyone freaks out. Really that's nuts. Yeah, no, what? it's crazy. So, <laughs> that's fuck. we're all over here. Okay, so I like look at him, like, and I'm like deeply in love with this man. Like, I'm just uh. under this control, right? And I look at him and I go, okay, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm, I say, okay, and I agree, and I just sit there, and I'm silent. And then two minutes later, we're both silent, and then he just looks at me and starts bawling. And he goes, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I take it back. Like, you know, like, don't do that. Please, like, don't do that. Like, he's, like, so apologetic, and he, like, starts crying and plays, like, the pity me card. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe you still love me after all of this stuff. Like, you know, you're such a good person. And I'm just like, okay, whatever. And, like, he tries to make up with me, and I'm like, I eat it up. I'm like, whatever. So we go back home and we like shower and go to bed and I'm like laying there and I remember laying there and I'm thinking, wait, what the fuck? Why would I even agree to doing this? Like, fuck right. you. At the end of the day, like you always, like you're the only one that has your own back, yeah. right? Like my parents have always taught me that, like you have to defend yourself. Yeah. And I was just thinking in my head, I'm like, no, you know what? You, right, you're not loving yourself the way you need to love yourself because no one else is gonna love you like you love you. Mm -hmm. Other people have your back, but you're the only you're the only one that matters. Exactly. At the end of the day, the like, of the day you're the only one. Like everyone, like exactly. Just, like, they, like, that, the only voice that matters. Yeah. The only like, if you respect yourself, it doesn't matter if anybody else does. It doesn't matter if you have exactly. Support, you can do it. You know. Exactly. So, like, you do have other people. Like, yeah. Like, right. You do, and like, you don't you know. realize that in the moment. Yeah. And I was like, I was laying there. You don't need shit. Though. Exactly. <laughs> I was laying there, and I was like. <laughs> you know what, this isn't right. Like, you actually need to leave him. And that's when I was actively like, I need to leave, Yeah. you know? And so like, you know, there's a different story on how I did leave, you know, you can find that on my first podcast. But um, yeah, so like, I was like, that was like a waking point. Yes. That was like a waking point for me. And I would literally was like, okay, like I need to go. Like, he doesn't love me. Like, this is like actual abuse. And like, that was yeah. like the turning point for me. And so like, I think to like answer your question, there's not a, always like a steady answer because there's so many different circumstances and like so many different things that play into it. And yeah. it's like, there's a, I think there's a lot of good people out there and they want to love more than what they're receiving. Mm -hmm. And so they like want to love that person. They know them on they a deep do. level. Like you know them like personally more than like somebody else. Like you probably know him more than I know him, right? Obviously. Right. But it's like, so you're going to love him more than I have that love. You yeah. know, and like people don't understand that. And so it's like from the outside perspective, you're like, why don't you just leave? Like they, they said yeah, this yeah. to you, like just leave. But it's like, oh, you don't oh, have oh. that love connection and understand That's what's true. really going on in the relationship. So I think it's like very complicated and there's so many different aspects to it. So, so that's why people don't leave. 
Thank you. There's a lot. Thank I'm you. like, sorry. There's no, like, that was a long no, story. That is really perfect. Yeah. So to end this conversation, yeah. how do I find out more about this situation? Is it on a podcast that is um, called? So my first podcast tells my story. Um, my second podcast talks about like why you don't leave and like the cycle of abuse and, and like stuff like that. Is, and like Where can I find it? Um, on Spotify and Apple Music. What's it called? Shipwrecked with two P's. So S H I P P wrecked. Hell yeah. Yeah. And you're going to keep podcasting. I'm going to keep podcasting when I get my podcast stuff set up. You're going to. So I'm going to. Pinky promise. I pinky promise. I will you have help to kiss you. it though. And you have to I make it where you have to. And then Sorry. make it heart. There you go. I, I actually don't know that. But uh, I will help. <laughs> it, whatever you need, I will help you because I. No, it's I love hard. That. Yeah, no, it's so hard. It's so Mariah. hard. Mariah! Ah! Good shit! Nobody's.